Hi, I'm Timo Solana, and you're listening to Missing Curfew. Obes, it's time. Bring up our friends here at Good Life Clothing. They've been with us since day one, too. These guys are beauties, and so are their clothes. The Good Life shorts are money. Their sweatshirts are cash money. I'm telling you, this this relationship we got Good Life, it's unbelievable. Quality essential clothing for modern living. Made in the US of A, up dog. Amazing stuff. We love the product, and now we're offering our fans a discount. Buy. Well, it's always been Curfew 20. So check out their bundles. Get hooked up www.goodlifeclothing.com jump on the website do yourself a favor and get dialed in curfew 20 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a fresh new episode of Missing Curfew. I'm Shane O'Brien coming to you from Hall Pass Media. In beautiful Newport Beach with my boy, Discovery Land Project. Well, I don't even know what the title is yet, but we'll get you on. William Scotty Updog. Obi, thanks for having me. You look fresh. You must have just got out of the pool. I did. Your hair's looking good. <laughs> You're looking lean. You must be ready for Cabo Wabo, baby. I'm ready for Cabo. I'm going to maybe take my shirt off and play golf. It's been a long time since I've taken my shirt off on the golf course. I may do it this week with you. Yeah, you get that fucking... Get that good tan, that good base going. I know you're excited about the the new job and, and you're repping with McKenna, but that's two days in a row now. I've seen you with uh, no missing curfew stuff on, so I'm a little I'm a little concerned. I'm not going to push the panic button yet, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a little concerned. I mean, they got some nice tarps, not <laughs> not as nice as the missing curfew tarps for for those of you who who now own uh, a piece of missing curfew. We do have some elegant uh, materials. We well, I, we use only the best here at Missing if, Curfew. If you want me to be honest with the up dog, and you can tell your boss Mike Melman this is where I found the t-shirt quality when we first started doing Missing Curfew. I got a t-shirt at McKenna on Craig Manchester's, Manchester's account, and I looked at the tag. I'm like, fuck, these are soft, and that's what the Missing Curfew ones are. They so flow. Thank you to Discovery. You're welcome. And uh, anyway, it's nice to be back in the in action in the studio yes. with you with our boy Broadway Jimmy Hayes from the East Coast. How are you, Jimmy? Boys, I'm doing really well. I miss you guys a lot. I love being in California. The weather there is amazing. It's freezing here. I'm actually heading to Florida tomorrow. But, oh, you know the one thing I miss the most is sitting on your couch and be able to watch hockey all day because we get the late night games here. And I'm already in bed. Like, I don't even get to catch half those late night games. That's the best part of being Cali. I know, Broadway. Hey, we, me and you, I I always kind of assume this, but we would have been good roommates. Me and you were on the same. I'm like... After we were in the, you'll love this. After we were in the studio on last Tuesday recording Broadway's first time in there, we went and had lunch at Gulfstream. We had to wait 45 minutes. He met Grant Garbers and his beautiful wife. And it's nice. I'm like, Broadway, what, you know, what do you want to do? You got to go back to Boston tomorrow. He's like, I don't really give a fuck. You want to just go back and still the coach and watch hockey? I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. So we would have been good roommates, bud. Uh, I would have loved to have been your roommate, too. It would have been a nice little veteran there for me to. Learn the ropes. The, I had the up dog in Florida. He showed me the way, but it would have been nice to have you yeah. on my side early on. Jimmy, I can't sit down, though. I can't. Uh, I'm always buzzing around. Even, <laughs> even if there's a game on, I'm still like fucking going, getting the wine cork, filling up a glass, buzzing out, seeing the trees in the backyard, fixing a fucking pillow on the couch. I just can't sit so, still. Yeah, I was going to say, when I went over to your house, I think I saw you for two minutes. So I was sitting <laughs> yeah. there, like downstairs, like scratching my head, like, uh, what do I do here? And this kid's outside in the back. He's talking to a neighbor. He's got the park next door. He's got shit going on upstairs. Like, up dog, you're always on the go. That's a standard up dog move. Oh, let's come over and watch the game. I'm like, now I just text him, are we really going to watch the fucking game, though? The only game I've seen him sit down, start to finish, was World Juniors. You fucking was were, a you were like, you had your team Canada shirt on, you were fucking diving right in. But uh, Broadway, before we, t- we uh, tee up the up dog on an unbelievable weekend that he just had, dude, I am fucking ice cold, man. I took the Edmonton Oilers to beat the Toronto Maple Leafs without Austin Matthews, and they got shut out not once, but twice by, and the second time by Michael Hutchinson. <laughs> Michael who? Exactly. Dude, you gotta be kidding me. The Parlay Cafe has been closed. I haven't even come close the last couple of days. So then last night I thought, all right, hey, I'll before I go to bed, I'll just tee up uh puck line Colorado, wake up to see they lost six two. So I'm with you, buddy. I'm getting hammered on this over here on betting. Well listen, I took I after the flame after the flames lost to the senators and then the Oilers got shut out by the leaves. I did the old puck line abs too, and and good thing you were in bed because at the start of the third, I just turned it <laughs> off and went to bed, and I was laying in bed, and my uh, girlfriend was with me last night, and I was just laying there being like, how the fuck am I going to get out of this hole I'm in right now? <laughs> like, you know, so a parlay cafe, baby. That's yeah. how we're going to. We're going to get, gonna get into some more gambling stuff in a bit, but up dog, 
Just give our listeners, yeah. yeah, you did something that's fucking National League, beyond National League. Yeah, so, geez, Obes, it's been a couple of weeks since we got back from McKenna. Uh, at McKenna, I got I got to know Michael Melman, who is the, you know, he's the pioneer and the visionary of what's Discovery Land Properties. And for those of you who don't know what Discovery Land Properties are, there's about 23 private club uh, membership-based um kind of like landmarks all throughout the world. And we've been to a bunch, a bunch of our friends own them. A bunch of good hockey players live uh, live at a couple of them. Gauzer Ranch in particular, which is um, up in the hills on the lake in, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, near Spokane. And uh, anyway, I uh, had a first work trip. I went out to Baker's Bay, which is in Bahamas. Um, I went out with my boss, JJ, and one of our close friends, Craig Manchester and his family. Craig was going out there to look at a property. Of course you are. So, uh, yeah, so so we flew out. Uh, we did a little bit of golfing. We got to know the area. It actually got hit by Hurricane Dorian about two years, a year and a half ago. Kind of wiped out the whole uh, the whole island, which was devastating. There's still palm trees and some boats kind of, you know, and debris kind of on their property. So some, you know, it's, it's devastating to see, obviously, a country to have to go through that with not much, you know, not much money supplied to them in in you know, relief funds and whatnot. So it was, it was crazy, but it was, it was a really, really fun trip. Um, highlight of my trip while I was at Baker's Bay was getting my hair cut by Tom Brady's hairdresser. Always goes back wow. to his hair, doesn't yeah, it? Totally. Probably. Always goes back to his hair. This, this gentleman, Peeny, who is just an absolute legend, had his, had his clippers there, uh, went over to his house and uh, sat in a chair, like right looking at the ocean and shit, he cut my hair and made it look, I, I'm like, can you make me look like Tom Brady? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, I mean, you look good, fella, fucking try it. I, I know I won't have <laughs> seven, right seven rings and a, and, and a smoking hot supermodel wife, but uh, you know, if you can trim up, more kills up the than, sides. You got more kills than him though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's um, he does. <laughs> so that was a super, that was a, that was a highlight there, but then, you know, man, I got to go play golf in, uh, in South Florida at Jupiter, where a lot of golfers live, with uh, with Air Mike, Michael Jordan yeah, the himself, goat. the goat. And guys, I got to tell you, I played 36 with him. And you know, I don't want to give too much away, but this guy is everything you can think he is. He's he's humble. He's he's super badass. Treats everyone I saw with the utmost respect. You, you, I mean, you look at the guy, you see greatness. You fucking almost smell greatness. But you know, oh, he smells rich, doesn't hey, it? Yeah, he, <laughs> hey, he smokes cigars, <clears throat> hits golf balls over. You know how hard it is to hit a golf ball with a fucking huge stogie in your mouth. Yeah, I can't do it. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah, he hit every shot with a stogie, man. He he got up and down from everywhere. He absolutely kicked my ass, so I got to put myself on the milk carton for for the weekend because um, he threw 76, 73 at me, Jimmy. Wow. It was wow. it was impressive, but um, you know, he'd, he'd get up to the tee, kind of you know tell a little, tell a little story, um, but just the confidence. Like he he actually at one point I was on the green, I had like a maybe a five foot birdie putt on a par three, and I was playing like shit, and uh, he misses the green. So finally, I'm like, I'm gonna get a shot back here, right? I was down probably two going into like 13 or 14 and he's got a bunker in front of him and then about a 30 yard, uh, you know, green to work with to the pin. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm standing up by my putt and I see the caddy like take the pin out. I'm like, what the fuck? Fucking Nicholson style. So I'm looking at Jordan and I see him just a couple practice swings, steps up and throws a fucking nasty chip to about a foot. <laughs> and I start laughing and he's, he's kind of got the swag and he played tunes all day and he had a huge uh, boom box in his cart and played tunes all day. It was, it was so badass. And uh, I go to the caddy. I'm like, why the fuck did you pull the pin? He's like, he gave me the look. I'm like, what look? He goes, it's a look he gives me when he fucking, he takes the stogie out of his mouth and kind of throws his head to one he's side. Got a signal. And it's a signal. <laughs> and he's like, I know right then and there that it's uh, it's my duty to take the fucking pin out. Pull the and, fucking but, pin. It was, it was just, it was something special to watch. So I'm down, you know, I was down three. He closes me out on 17. We get to 18. He's looking at me. He's like, I'll take whatever kind of press you want. Yeah, you <laughs> I'm like, all right, fucking press, let's go. And I ended up, we both made par on 18, so yeah. I didn't lose that much more. But it was, it, his course, Grove 23, private club, 87 members. Um, you know, Keith Yandel's a member, our boy Yans. And yep. uh, Clark MacArthur, who has played golf with Jordan for, for years, is also a member. So I saw Keegan Bradley, big fan of the yeah, pod. Keegs, we're going to get Keegs on. Um, a lot of pro golfers out there. The practice facility is unbelievable. Um, 
and it was a work trip. It was a great work trip. So. Was it though? Was it a work trip? It was, was it? a fucking work trip. <laughs> oh, it doesn't sound like a fucking work trip to me, does it? Yeah, it sounds like an <laughs> unbelievable vacation and a dream come true to me. But yeah, it hey, was. It work was. trip it is. Up dog, I don't want to get you in trouble, but you did send me a little video. That was like, okay, right? Like, or is that frowned upon? I don't want to get you shit here, but... Jordan had the cargo shorts on. What is he just carrying those fucking Benjamins? Is that full of money he's or what? Cigars. He's got everything in there, doesn't he? He says, yeah, they sell, <laughs> in the pro, they sell them in the pro shop. Fuck it. So, yeah, you sent me a little video. I hope I don't get you in trouble. But his swing looked just like silky. I mean, that's an unbelievable story. Who was more fun to play with, him or Phil? I know you had a good time playing with Phil, too. But uh, 100% Michael Jordan. Yeah, He's the most badass human on planet Earth. He played tunes all day, and I swear, once one out of every three or four songs, you'd hear, like, fucking, you know, it would be him in the song. It would be fucking, they'd be talking about Air Mike. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah, when yeah. Air Jordan. When people jump man, jump man, jump man. It's like, fuck, you just the best shit ever. Yeah, right? that's unbelievable. So, um, good for you. So, it's nice to be back in the studio, boys, with you guys. But hopefully, you know, you got to get MJ back, right? That's the first time you got to play with him again to get that money back. I left him a note because yeah. he, he had to take off. I said, you know, thanks for having me. You place, you, you the place you built here is awesome. Um, I need a better partner than my boss, JJ, when I come back. <laughs> <laughs> and here's, here's the money I lost, and I'm coming back for it at some point. So, Life is good for both the boys that miss in curfew. Broadway, we do miss you in the studio, but let's dive into some hockey, fellas, and we're going to start in Montreal. That's the biggest news. Claude Julien and a guy who, Uppy, you respect uh, and played for, I believe, Kirk Muller, correct? Both fired. Um, what were your thoughts on it? And uh, I, I know you have a lot of respect for Kirk. I mean, Julian's had, he's had a nice stretch there. I think you even played for him too, Jimmy, right? Yep, we played for him in Boston. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, listen, sometimes it's time's up for the head coach. Now, I didn't actually realize right off the bat because I ended up tweeting, all right, it's time for Kirky to get the to get the gig and the nod because the guy deserves a head coaching job. He stepped in last year when Julian had a yeah. you know mishap in the playoffs, a health issue. Um, in St. Louis, Kirky was was the heart and soul of, of what I thought was you know the the heartbeat of the coaches for us. Um, took a lot of pressure off the way Hitch would you know scream at guys or or whatever. The guy loves his red wine. He has a great family. Um, what he did in Montreal as a player and as a captain, I thought was going to give him the opportunity to be the head coach. Now, let's put that aside. Um, uh, the new guy they got is the prodigy that they want. Um, our boy Frank Cervelli from TSN was explaining that this uh, this was a move that was kind of in the making for some time. So, you know, a lot of things going on in Montreal. They go from the, the excitement of, of a hot start and being Stanley Cup contenders yeah. now to being in the doghouse and to, to fire sale uh, everyone. So my view on it is is it's up to the players to kind of turn things around. Fans, I mean, you, you got to lay off the guys a little bit. You got to let them sort their stuff out. But Yeah, we're going to get to the fans next, but the new guy's name, <clears throat> probably, do you know the coach's new name? You're always my name guy. What's the, what's his name? No, I, no like, I don't. It's, uh, it's man, a funky we'll, one. We'll, 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 we'll get right here, but he, have it for you. He's definitely better looking than Claude Julian. No disrespect, <laughs> Claude, but this guy's got the nice silver fox. But you played for Claude Julian uh, Broadway. You know, does he bounce back? Do you think this is it for him? What were your thoughts when you seen him get relieved by the Canadians? It, it just seemed like it was almost the identical situation in Boston. Obviously, he was in Boston a lot longer. But, you know, sometimes you just need a new voice. And, like, when the, when things aren't going well, the players aren't going to get fired. So someone's going to get fired. Someone needs to answer to that. And it's, it's always usually always the coach. But it's just I, – I don't know. I just feel like Julian, he sometimes might get stuck with, like, his uh, – what his go-to guys and you keep riding those guys and you almost wear them down. But it's just a situation that, you know, when you need that new voice in the room, they got to go find it somewhere. And it's like with Boston, they had <clears throat> Bruce Cassidy in the minors who was had Providence as one of the best teams every year. So they almost had him in the make and waiting there. And he's come to Boston. And I mean, probably since he's been the head coach in Boston, they probably have the best record in the NHL. So who knows, maybe this could be something for Montreal. Yeah, I think, go ahead up, Doug. I was going to say Dominique. Ducharme. Double D. Double <laughs> I fuck D. That up? How do you, Ducharme. Ducharme. No, it's, it's probably Ducharme. Ducharme. Either way, he... We'll uh, call him Double D or something. Yeah, either way, I, like kind of, I think he come from the queue. Yeah, he did. He's, he did, right? Had Drew in as a, as a player, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, who else did they bring in? We, we they brought about in one really. of my former teammates, team? um, Alex Burroughs, up from Laval. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think Burr, listen, he'll... You know, I love playing with Burr. And then when I played against him, there was no secret. There's... You know, there's a clip where I got, you know, I'm playing in Colorado, he's in Vancouver, and I literally got my hand over his mouth and trying to drive his face through the ice. But when I was on his team, he's a great player. He brings lots of energy. He competes. His story's great from the East Coast League to the Ring of Honor of Vancouver, right? He's up there. He's up there. Now, saying that, 
Fuck, I just wonder if he's going to be chirping from the bench. I know they got to wear the mask because of COVID, but I think he'll bring some energy. I, I never thought Burr would be a coach, to be honest with you. I don't know why. I thought maybe management, scouting, director, player, personnel, some kind of job like that. I didn't think he'd be behind the bench, but congratulations to him. And when it comes to Julian, and this is just my opinion, and Uppy, I know Kirk Muller, you, you love him, and I don't, I don't know if I've ever met him, but I've, I've heard great things about him. With the return to play Broadway last year, they played the Pittsburgh Penguins in a best of five series, which is not normal. They beat them. What I'm saying is, if without COVID, they would have missed the playoffs. They were one point ahead of Buffalo, I believe, at the time, and got in the return to play. They yeah. beat Pittsburgh, lost to Philly in five or six. They get off to a hot start. I just don't think they're as good as we thought. I drank the Kool-Aid. I had them in the top five after we did our power rankings. I think it's a little bit of too high of expectations for Claude Julian. And like you said, Updog, they had this guy in the wings, ready to take charge. Yeah, it, it happens. I mean, coaches get on the hot seat. It's... Uh, it's the way of the world. You know, they're only as good as their last game. And, and if your last game is followed by 10 other games where you're losing, <laughs> that, that, I mean, it's it's time. Marm, you know, Bergevin in Montreal, he was looked at as making all these great, you know, uh, free agency plays this summer. And now it's kind of, uh, he, he's pointing the blame somewhere else. He's not taking it. Yeah, speaking of Bergevin, rumor has it that when he fired Claude Julien, he had this, like, um, the first day of the press conference, he had this, like, light blaby blue blazer on. That was pretty fucking sick. National League blazer with his hair looking good. And then he came in the next day, same blazer. So I'm like, holy fuck, maybe Bergie got in one and had to answer the questions. <laughs> back. He might have missed curfew, Bergie, after he fucking threw us so out of the Julian bunk. out for the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it just piggybacks me into my other point here about the Montreal media. And listen, Up, you, you talked about it. You went in, you loved playing in Montreal. You had great playoff success. We all loved playing there, but we never had to play for the Montreal Canadiens. Now, there was a thing on the cover of, I don't know what paper in Montreal, but a picture of Carey Price, a cartoon that says overpriced. Now, you look at his numbers. Granted, he's not playing maybe up to ex expectations, but he's still a legit goalie. Like, Montreal better be careful what they say here with, you know, Seattle in the wings. I don't know how much longer Carey Price can take being in Montreal. Yeah, we saw it with Patrick Wall back in the day. Yeah. Patrick Wall went on to win two more cups. Uh, still has a lot of left. <laughs> The, far, the way I look at it, Price still has a lot of legs left. Um, you know, we saw Montreal this year be a quality defensive hockey team that was scoring goals at will. Uh, with good goaltending, that's that's the recipe for winning hockey. Now, um, when things don't go well, a couple injuries, guys don't put the puck in the net, all of a sudden you're, you know, you're four goals you score, you can't keep the puck out and you're losing, you know, six, seven, four. Um, things are going to be, you know, things are going to change. Now, Carey Price, he's still one of the best goalies he's still going to be on the hot list for for the olympics um you know he's been there before he's played in big games uh if they move him man the grass isn't always greener in this world so we'll see we'll see i i know he has he has a lot of pride it could be carry pride not yeah. carry price so <laughs> we'll see if we'll see if nice. he wants to go west if he does he's playing you know hometown discount he is from british columbia um yeah. He does like to, you know, see the wilderness and hang out and look at the stars. So it's not uh, this. This might be a big, big move for for NHL and for hockey and for Carey Price himself. Now, I agree with you there, Uppy, and I think Carey Price is a generational goalie. And oh, did you send us those stats? And those stats were he's top three in wins, goals against average, save percentage since what is it, December first? Yeah. And there was rumors, I believe, was it last off season that he wanted out in the, and to head west. So with Seattle sitting there as a, an expansion team coming in, could be a great fit for him. So as a as a Montreal fan, I think you got to lay off Carey Price because you got one of the best goalies in the league, and you don't want to run him out of town when he might already have one foot out the door. Yeah, exactly. I agree with both you guys, and I think there's some real traction to him wanting to go to Seattle. His girlfriend or wife, I guess, is from the Northwest. I think she's from um, Washington, even like around Seattle, or maybe she's from British Columbia. I'm not sure about that, but I know she's from the Northwest. Hey, listen, people in Montreal, fucking settle down a little bit. Like, if he leaves, it's yeah. like it's like the girlfriend up. You have our neck. It's like when you get traded, you had like a sick bullpen, and then you get traded to fucking a new team, and you got to restock the bullpen. Well, if Carey Price is out of town, and all of a sudden next year you got Jake Allen and some other fucking young schlub in there, you'll be like, wow, I wish I had Carey Price right now. Like, so I, if I'm in Montreal, I know they're a passionate fan base. Lay off this guy. Don't give him any more motivation to move out of town because I'm telling you, if you ask Shea Weber, if he wants Carey Price to stick around, I guarantee Webbs does. So to the fans of Montreal, fucking settle down, get a poutine, relax, and fucking you know, don't be all over Carey Price because he might be leaving town. So um, up dog, this is a this is a topic that I should maybe not chirp about because 
As you know, I've put a few on since my playing days. I think you should chirp it anyway. I'm going to chirp it anyways. Kelly Rudy, who is a fucking beauty, actually. I used to see him in Calgary all the time. He's he's not afraid to have a cold beer. Mid-fucking uh, telecast, his button pops off his suit, and it goes viral <laughs> in Canada. And I couldn't help but laugh. What were your thoughts when you saw Kelly Rudy's button almost take fucking someone's eye out? It happens. It's it's. <laughs> it, I mean... He got attacked by, did he get stung? Was there bees in there? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I could just picture, because it's happened to me. Like you put <laughs> a suit. It was priceless, you put man. A, I remember I did a sports net thing with Murph. This was like two hours. Two, I remember. Yeah. And I fucking, oh, fuck. I hadn't been on TV all year and I hadn't had a suit on and I put on fucking 30 probably. I got this fucking thing on and it's like right there. So I'm like. No, you know what else you did before that? What? I remember you I went and got a facial. It. I didn't get a facial. You ain't got a facial. I didn't get a facial. <laughs> his fucking red, his face was so red and like shiny that it was just, it was a fucking full storm. It was yeah. the perfect storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Day. I mean, I still thought I got the job done, but. Oh, I, you were great. I had a facial book to this girl. The girl that cuts my hair is like, hey, you ever had a facial? I'm like, no. And then I, Murph's like, hey, we're doing Wednesday night, first intermission. I'm like, up, you say, so get the facial or? For like, first facial in what? How long is Ever. That? Ever. First yeah, ever. That's tough. Um, so anyway, getting back to the, getting back to this, it just, it, bite my it just here. popped in my head. Oh yeah, fuck. You could talk about what the wax or whatever you want. You could talk about anything. <laughs> oh, hey, God. I think we got to put this button on the fucking milk carton though. <laughs> Kelly Rudin's, Kelly Rudy's buttons on the milk carton. Someone find fucking Someone Kelly find Rudy's that fucking button. button. Cause it's at the salad dome somewhere. <laughs> really that camera. I think it fucking went straight into that camera, but I feel for him, man. I'm in, like, that's my biggest fear. Like I haven't put a suit on in a while, but. I don't have the big upper body, so I'm not too worried about that. Mine would be more about down with the pants, just not being able to get that buckle across my waist right now. Tom Ford, right? Tom Badass Ford. clothes. Yeah. Like, probably the best. He always said, and I read this in a magazine, every man needs to buy a tuxedo before they turn 30. So if you haven't yet and you're fucking not 30, you got to go buy a tux because you're going to need it at got some point. Got my wedding one. And that tux better fit you till you're fucking 60. So that's the whole thing. It's Holy like, fuck, Tom keep Ford, it calm fucking, down, bud. Hey, keep it tight. Like, Buddy, fucking, listen, if, you, if it goes off the rails, try to bring her back. Hey, I'm, try, to bring I'm, her back. I'm trying because they were, they were off the fucking rails. <laughs> I got my, like, eight National League suits in the back left of my closet. And my girl's always like, wow, these suits are really nice. I said, babe, unless you got a time machine, those babies aren't fucking being ever worn. Right? Like, they're like, they won't get over my leg Broadway. And, no, I know, but there's a way to bring it back. Yeah, yeah, and get, you're doing a hell of a job. new fucking suits. That's <laughs> <laughs> hey, Broadway, speaking of, you're looking fucking jacked, bro. I saw last week when we were hanging out in Tahoe back in my house, you've been doing some boxing also, like... We were joking around, but maybe we should challenge one of these Paul brothers to get us some press maybe or something. Because you, or who's the guy from Barstool you wanted to, you wanted to challenge? Oh, um, Billy Football. Billy, Billy Football. Football. Yeah, Billy Football. He's uh, <laughs> he's one of those guys that uh, was he works with Big Cat. He beat up one of he beat up Jose Canseco. So I think Billy Football. I've been training boxing. I might be able to hit Billy with a one two and put him to sleep. You were looking. I like you're a tall. Always been a tall guy. But I was standing beside Broadway last week and. Fuck. Yeah, he's a fuck big boy. We forgot how big you were, man. Yeah. He's been skating though too. He's his I, thighs. I, skating. I had the skates off, but I've been boxing a lot, but. Uh, I think I would have to step on my boxing game if I wanted to get in the ring with one of those Paul brothers. Well, listen, me but, I mean, I would love to, but those guys are legit fucking training. I know, but we fight. would train. We would train you. We would fly you out here. Me and Uppy would be in your corner. We'd hire whoever you wanted, boxing Billy instructor, Quinn. whoever. Yeah, Billy Quinn. Come in, do and some grappling. We we train you for six weeks, whatever it takes, whatever you think, eight weeks, and we're in your corner. You got a missing curfew roll, and me and Uppy are there I cheering you on. Oh, I would love it. I'd already got my walkout song. I'm a boss by Meek Mill, and I'd be doing a slow <laughs> walk right out to that ring. Hey, so to Kelly Rudy, he's a beauty, and he actually came back on the air laughing, laughing, and his wife put on a like a button from like a like a massive button, and he he, <laughs> kind, he kind of put it to rest. So Kelly Rudy, good on you, you're a beauty. Maybe go and stay off the Bolson heavies though, and go to the fucking Bud Light. Get the yourself. bandana back on. <laughs> Get the baby blue bandana Get back bandana on. Kelly, bandana back on. He's a beauty. Speaking of goaltenders, up, we're gonna tee us right into our next little segment here, the St. Louis Blues. Maybe because they've been costing me money. I know they're injured, Uppy, but Bennington loses his mind the other night. They win 7-6. First of all, give me your thoughts on that. And then just give me your thoughts on the Blues in general. I know they're banged up, but does scoring and speed concern you a little bit? Uh, first of all, it's it's no surprise, and it's, um, it's in his nature. Bennington being a competitive cat like he is to... You know, when he gets pulled, his thing is to go skate kind of close to their bench. And if he gets chirped by anyone, it's game on. Oh, you like, can tell he at, was waiting for it. Yeah, look at what happened last year or two years ago in the finals. I went to game three. 
Game three, they get shelled. It's fucking five one or five nothing before you can even you know get your first beer. And Boston's up on him, and he sk- he's getting pulled, and he skates right by the bench, and he looks at the whole bench and just starts chirping everyone. I'm like, who does that in the fucking finals, right? But he does, and it's <laughs> it's, it's it's Jordan Binnington's way of saying like, okay, you got me tonight, but you're gonna have to get me for the seven game series. This ain't over. Now. That, that again happened in game six of the finals where they could have closed him out back in St. Louis. They lose again, get shelled, he gets pulled, and same thing. Skates by, says, you know, Fuck gives, you. Yeah, gives him his fucking two cents. And then uh, I, I just love it. So I was hoping he would have dropped his mitts and it would have been great. I, I was it would have been great. Dub- yeah. Him and Dubnik. I don't know if that's ever happened. I was talking with Imagine Bertuzzi. You Has that pull, ever I'm happened? You with me. A goalie gets pulled and he just goes down and sheds his mitts with the next goal. <laughs> I don't know. It would have been unbelievable. That's I, what I was know. hoping he did. I know. It would have been great for missing curfew uh, Instagram. It would have been would have been awesome. Um, so anyway, talking to the St. Louis Blues, we'll touch on it. Yeah. Yes, injuries are, are, are tough. They've lost um, numerous guys. I know one guy in particular on their back end is playing hurt and has been all year. can, can hardly walk. Um, I mean, they, they got guys, sorry, they got Bozak out, Schwartz out. Yeah. yeah per, per, exactly. uh, Perenko's out. Perenko. I mean, Tarasenko's yeah. out. I mean, they got some fucking guys out. They but do. Keep and now, and now, so so now it's like, okay, in the, in the dog days, if we're there yet, of this hockey season, everyone needs to step up. Last night, they, you know, the new kid, I'm not, I don't even know his name. I'd butcher it if I tried. Who's the goalie? Comes in. No. Okay. No, new kid, uh, fifty number 54. And I'll look it up. Yeah, look it up. Okay, here's his name. It's actually Dakota Joshua. Oops, fella, fella. <laughs> Dakota Joshua. That's his first NHL goal off his off his head last night. Off his hip. You used to score a couple like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, go to the net, and then I'd barrel the goalie over and throw the crossbar into the corner. Um, so listen, it's time for just the th- third, fourth line guys, the character guys, to step up and take more responsibility, play play better. Our boy Fact Daddy's been, you know, feeling the heat as a new captain, but he shouldn't. He's doing everything he can. He should never change his game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're just going to see like confidence and and their character take over. And once they get in the dance, Obi, we talked about this on Sirius Radio with with our boy Cooley. You know, teams like this, they're big, strong. They've been there before. They've won. They know what it takes. All they need to do is get in the dance and be healthy. And then it's anyone's game. So I don't worry about them right now. Yes, they've fallen a little bit. Yes, teams like Edmonton are coming on strong. Um, you know, if you want to look around the league, there was a lot of teams that had slow starts that are now finding their game. But it's because maybe they're healthy or maybe they're just, you know, f- figuring their stuff out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's time that, uh, you know, the men start taking over and carry on into the season. Hey, yo. It, yeah, it's it's way too early to <laughs> hit the panic button, I think, in St. Louis. Until that team is uh, healthy, like you said, that was a laundry list of guys that are, those are regular guys that are on that team It was every a fucking laundry night. list. Lost. And I, I think the, the St. Louis Blues, they they need to just get healthy. They need, once they get Tarasenko back in, it's a whole different, whole different lineup, a whole new element they add. And I, I, I like St. Louis. And like you said, all they got to do is stay relevant, stay in the playoff race. And then it comes down to the final stretch and they get those guys back. That's a team you don't want to run into. Well said, Broadway. And I love St. Louis. I got fuck them then to win the cup and the future's bet up, dog. I, then how much I'm in a hole, I need them to win the fucking cup right now. With <laughs> Bennington, for me, I, I loved it. As a fan, as an ex player, I loved it. Now, I tried to turn back and be like when I played, all right? So I played for Roberto Luongo and Pekka Rennie were my two guys I thought of. Their emotions were always like this. Like if, if if Bobby Lou won 10 straight, he was like that. If he lost two straight, Pekka the same way. If anything, they were always calming us down. Like, calm down, boys. Calm down, boys. So when it's the goalie, I know Big Tits already want to stay in the cup and in his head, so it doesn't really matter. I was a little concerned about that, but, it, you know, I talked to some guys on St. Louis. He's like that always. In between the period, yeah. if, they're, if they're off to a tough start, he'll fucking let the boys have it. So that's just his emotion, which I love. And Oppie, I think you touched on it with St. Louis. It's the regular season. I watch them play. I know they're banged up. For me, the only thing that concerns me is is their team speed. And that will change in playoffs. The rules change. It's more of a man's game, and that's when they're going to be fine. But I watched the LA Kings go in there and beat them to lose pucks two nights in a row, and I was like, and they just couldn't score. But they're going to get healthy. I'm pulling for St. Louis. I love the fact that, obviously, um, I just wanted to get your beauty's cons- uh, thoughts on it because they have been so banged up, it's hard to get a feel on that. And that West Division is better than we thought. No, it is. And I just want to touch on this again because you mentioned it. The heart the heart and soul of their team right now, who uh, I witnessed firsthand, is Jaden Schwartz. Jaden Schwartz is a free agent this year. He's going to get paid. Even if there's no money out there, he's still going to be looked at as this guy makes everyone around him better. 
He wins every loose puck. So what you saw in LA doesn't happen when Jaden Schwartz is in the lineup. Uh, Braden Shen's a better player with him on his line. Bozak's a better player with him on his line. They miss Bozy. They they do, yeah, yeah. but just those that like water bug mentality of going in and just being feisty and winning puck battles and having it on your stick and always making a play to the point where the guy gets a clear shot through that those little those are the intangibles that that Schwartzy brings so they're they're missing it yeah time. and he you know what you want to talk about fucking winning puck battles like you said that Schwartzy he's hard on all, all kinds of pucks and and that will come with time they're a veteran team um I just been watching them a lot and they've been costing me some money so maybe that's why I've been a little harder on a Broadway um <laughs> We're gonna to turn to this guy Fox at Broadway. We're gonna we're gonna start off with you. You played with this guy, Patty Kane, scored his 400th NHL goal uh, in typical Patty Kane style. Came in, and I thought it was fucking short side titty, but apparently it wasn't. What are your thoughts on on Patty Kane 400 goals? I mean, that goal he scored too. That and against Detroit, that rivalry they had. That's like that must have been an unbelievable feeling for him to finally get that 400th goal and. The way he did it with that toe drag and then going short side, it, that was vintage Patty Kane. And you know what? He's just been like one of the best Americans. He, he's going to be up for debate as is he going to be the best American to ever play? Like, Fuck yeah. He's a guy that I believe <laughs> every kid has looked up to. What and that he's a question? Like, what about Mikey Lodano really for fuck's he, sake? He's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's on pace. I think somebody tweeted out he needs – if he plays till he's 40 years old, he needs to average 18 goals a season, and that would be the all-time – United States uh, goals record. So he's on pace to get that. And I, I just, I'm thinking of him. I think he's been a stud since he's entered the league. And he's, um, like you said, when we talk about style, he's invented his own style. Everyone looks up to them. He's every young kid wants to be Patrick Kane. Who is who is he trailing in goals? Medano's like, an all time leading Joel. goal scorer, right? Medano. Yeah, but he he he's, he needs to he needs to play like this was a style. Like he has to average 18 goals a season until he's 40, and he'll pass Medano by one. Fuck, he will play that long though. I think Patty, Patty Kane, right? He's just yeah. Like, I just think uh, I don't care what anyone says. He is the best American-born player. He's solidified that already with his cups and his clutch, his clutch scoring, yeah, and, true, and who he cups. is. Right. Like you know, pioneering the the way that he's played. It's like every young kid's dream, right? Like now, like look at this Zegras kid who tried to do the old. <laughs> fuck, he almost fucking, had that the cross talk. Oh, fuck, fuck he had goal. the goal. And totally. The the so, but he's a young Patty Keen. That they all like it. You know, the the, the Hugheses are the same way. The, yeah. You know, Matthews. They all want to be Patty Keen. The way that they yeah. the way that they play. But, I mean, he should go down 100 percent as as the best. I played against Mike Medano. Um, God, he had six style like he mowed, didn't he? Yeah, but the jersey flap. So the jersey oh, man. Yeah, no, I know. He did have know. he had to have the best wheels though. Those CCM tacks Fuck, were. They look sick. On he him. made him look unbelievable. But. Mikey Mo was the only the first guy in my first year when I saw him warm up where I had like a oh my god, like fuck, look at his hair, look at his jersey, look at his wheels. And then I was like, oh, look at Chris Barch drooling over the red line. I'm going to have to fight this guy. I have a story of Chris Barch that I, I want to wait to tell okay. this podcast. But okay. fuck. Can, I can't wait to hear that. That was a fucking animal. For me with Patty Kane, and I was listening to the, I don't know which podcast I was listening to. They were talking about Tom Brady and LeBron James. And me and Uppy, we had talked about guys like Taylor Hall. I throw Matt Duchesne in this, that they don't make players better around them. Patty Kane... They were saying Brady and James, yeah, they're great at what they do, but they make other players better than they should be. Yep. And that's what Patty Kane does. When I watch him play, especially this year, if I had a vote, if they gave Missing Curfew a vote for NHL awards, which I think they should, you know, we'll have our own awards. We'll have our own awards. My vote right now would be for Patty Kane as the Hart Trophy for as what the, he's done without Taves, without Kirby Doc. That lineup. They're without that fucking lineup, with the lineup they have. And he's making these young guys better around him up. And for me, that I think is an ultimate compliment to a player. The Coxman Award. The Coxman Award. Just, I, I like that I award. Agree. You can get the broads in the table and get the boys late, right? Like that's what Patty King does on the ice for the last. Yeah, yeah. No, and it's, he does it off the ice. I've seen it. I got witnessed it firsthand. I saw him, the fucking drunkest guy I've ever seen back in the day. Remember Lollapalooza? I don't know where we were. It might have been Paris Club. Yeah. Can we had, tell that? We probably can't tell that story, can we? Why? I don't know. He's the best American-born player ever. Well, he's sober now, but I mean, this is when he was fucking Broadway sober now too. We can't tell Broadway stories. Okay, I won't tell the fucking Patty Kane story. No, no, just... I won't tell the story. I mean, fuck, I was drunk too. So are you? But um, yeah, he is. He is by far the way he makes people better around him. And another thing that Fox is those Blackhawk jerseys they wore the other night. Did you see those reverse retro things? Those things. Fuck, those Broadway. were sick. I wish I had one of those uh, Hayes thirty nine ones. How about that? That was my first number, number thirty nine. So maybe I'll get somebody from <laughs> the uh, Chicago PR. They actually texted me to send a video because he's coming up on a thousand games. 
to congratulate him. Oh, so nice. I might have to be like, all right, I'll do the video if you send me a Hayes retro reverse jersey. Yeah, and then ask him to come on the pod too, right? Don't forget that. Yeah, oh, I'd love to get him on the pod. <laughs> we might be able to get him on the pod. Patty Kane. You, you tell those stories though. Yeah, you fuck, buddy. Congratulations. You're great for the game. You're you're exciting to watch. Keep her going. Up dog. Fuck, I feel like we talk about this kid every week. Oh, we yeah. gotta, well, we're on the we're on the fucking tail of, the of new this guy. We're, we're talking about this guy fucks, so we might as well continue this. <laughs> fucking Bo Byram. First fucks. NHL fight. I mean, what did you think when you saw him shedding the gloves at 20 years old or whatever he is? It's it's pretty ballsy. I loved it. It's a it, it's you know what? It's breaking into the league, showing guys that you you want to be here. It's a respect factor. Um, you know, a rivalry. Who who are they playing? Arizona. I actually is it Arizona, is it drag is it Gagula or I played I can't pronounce that count butcher's last name. Come on, bro. You're our guy. What's his name? Yeah, What's his like, name? Kadrula guy. I don't know. <laughs> I have a Kadrula all over my face after I drink these twenty five beers. Um, He's a little fucker, isn't he? Ninety one? Is that the yeah. guy we're talking about? Yeah. Smaller guy, yeah. Anyway, it's awesome. Sticks up for his you know, his guy goes to the front of the net, he doesn't like it, sticks up for his for himself and his teammates and and quite frankly Everything we've been saying about this kid is is because we love him. We can love the way he plays. We love what he's about. Um, it's a, you know, the new wave of kids. I think he's one of them that we're gonna enjoy watching for years to come. And uh, a buddy of mine that skates him in the summer, Derek Popke. And uh, shout out to him. He likes the pod, but he works with a lot of uh, a lot of the skaters: Morgan Riley, Stetcher, um, Brandon Sutter, a bunch of guys in Vancouver. He's like everything you guys are saying about this kid is bang on. He's he's the man. He's a, he's confident. He he's treats everyone well. Loves his beers. So huge horn. Keep going. <laughs> huge rope. <laughs> keep going, kid. Broadway. What were your thoughts on that for a young guy I, to fucking? I thought shed the him. most impressive. The most impressive part of it all, I thought, was you, it started in the corner, and then he came back to the front of the net, and he was looking for it. Like he wanted that tilt. He wanted to stick up for his team. Like you know, there. I think they were down one nothing at the point in the third period. So for a guy like him to get off the ice. But I think it was more of him just trying to shift the momentum. And I think if if he adds this type of uh, skill set to his package, then, I mean, this kid's going to be a, a light cell prospect. Yeah, good on you, Bull Byram. Um, you know, for a young kid to drop your gloves, listen, and for you people out there on our fucking Twitter, Princey puts it out, and these guys are, like, chirping him that he got beat up. Oh, it's a short fight. He got pumped. The kid's fucking 20 years old. You've never been in an NHL fight out there on Twitter. <laughs> I, I like the chirping. It's fine. I'm not, I'm not saying stop it, but give the kid credit, right? Like, he's he's probably, he's not known for fighting. He's a skilled defenseman. He skates like fucking Duncan Cleese, Duncan Keith slash Nico. What's the guy's name? Hirsch. Yeah. Uh, um, the guy in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Hirschkinen. What's his name? <laughs> Iskinen. Probably Iskinen. what's his name? Iskinen. Iskinen. I mean, he's like a fucking four of those two guys put together. <laughs> and, he's, and he's fucking dropping the gloves, so... Bo Byram, good on you. For those people that were chirping about getting beat up, fuck, it's not, about, it's not how many you win, it's how many you're in. I like I mean, that. Yeah, like I'm happy for the show kids. Up. So. He showed up. He showed That's up he and he dropped his gloves, put it on the put it on the resume, fella, and we love you here at Mr. Curfew. We've got to try to get him on up, Doug. We'll, we'll do what we can. So, boys, I've been watching lots of hockey and this I've seen this happen a couple of times to some of these poor fucks and it happened to me throughout my career. Um, blocking a shot and then taking the minus. You know, you just get out there, you get in the shooting lane, you fucking hit your wheel, it goes out, you're like limping, like, you know, you stay on the ice, the puck gets kept in, and you get scored on up. I was just laughing about it. Um, it was one of the worst things that's to happen in your career when you block the shot twice maybe, and you get hemmed in, and you still get the minus. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. It looked like you're doing something good for your team. <laughs> um, Jimmy, you got good stories on this, but <laughs> I, listen, it was an art form that I never had for my first 10 years. And then I started to go, okay, I got to learn how to block shots. Yeah. I can't just be like in the way. You got to, yeah. <laughs> you got to either the in puck. or you're in the way. You got to yeah. like eat it. Yeah. And the way some of these D men, and one, for example, Joel Edmondson in Montreal, he, he goes out to that one timer spot and just eats them in your ankles, in your ass, your, your arms. <laughs> your <ass. laughs> it's not perfect. No, I'll tell you. So sorry to cut you off. Speaking of that, yeah. I would always, I sucked it at two ups. So it would come out and like guys like Greg Zanin was so good at it. And like everyone would still like smack the boards. I'm like, okay, I guess I should try doing this. Like the writing's on the wall. I'm, like, I'm fucked here if I don't start doing this. So I would go down to the one knee and, but instead of going like this, I would just keep, keep going. And oh yeah. yeah. I would end up taking it right in the, thank God I had a little meat oh. on my back. I take it right in the back every time. Like I just didn't know how to do it. It was, I, I thought it was kind of a Bush league move that guys just started doing it. Now everyone does it, but it was kind of a skill too, up dog. Sure was. Jimmy, were you good at blocking shots? Because, I mean, Obi and I here. I was horrendous at it. 
I was I was literally horrible, but like you said, it's a skill to be able to block a shot, and that's why some guys are still in the league because that's one of their best qualities, being able to block a shot on a penalty kill. It'll buy you more ice time. It'll get you on the, it'll get you to stay in the league longer. But I was so bad at it, and I actually had a funny story with Patty Kane. I think I might have told it here once, but I went out, blocked the shot, hit my hand, and then after the period, I take my glove off, and I got like a pop uh, blood vessel, and Patty Kane's looking at me like, what the fuck's going on? And I'm like, yeah, I blocked that shot. And he just looked at me and goes, take the minus, kid. Don't ever block that <laughs> shot. So maybe that was early on. I was getting out of those lanes. I mean, though, when you're Patty Kane, you don't have to get in the fucking shooting lane. To the, go- to the hockey gods up there, if a guy blocks a shot, just don't fucking stick him with a minus, would you? Like, it's it's one thing enough. i just been watching these kids, and all they do is eat pucks, and a couple of them are getting stung with the minus. So, um, <laughs> Mr. Curfew, it wasn't our forte. I'm going to do my milk cart real quick. Up, you already put Kelly Rudy's uh, suit button on it, which is hilarious. <laughs> I'm watching the Leafs Oilers game last night, and maybe because I'm losing money, but refs, I'm throwing you on the milk cart again to my boy Steve Coolis and Christopher Stieg. You guys want every little slash called? Congratulations. Every little fucking slash was called last night. Phantom trips that ruined the flow of the game, and it just, it, it was salt in the wound up, dog. So I'm putting the fucking refs on the milk carton again for the way they called the Leafs Oilers. Steger, eh? Steger. Steger loves it. He was a power oh, play guy. No wonder he loves it. We got to get him on. Fuck you, uh, us guys who work hard out there. <laughs> Fucking us guys, wet, us guys fucking who back check. <laughs> hey, Steger. The fucking guys who back check and fucking grind out, grind it out in the corners. Fuck, we we slashed yeah. each other. So yeah. you just want to get out there on the PP and fucking work the half wall, which I mean, you were good at. I give you that. Yeah, he was. Thanks for that gold medal at the Spangy, by yeah. the way. You played fucking great. <laughs> no, he was good at the peepers. Steger's he was a great player, player, but the Steger's, Steger still played a chippy game, man. Like, I remember Steger whacking and slashing me in the playoffs. Like, he wants it now, but I'm like, I don't know if you were out there if you ask were Bully. playing. Yeah, ask Bully if Bo- he doesn't want any slashing. Bully wants to slash. Bully played the cross out there. He's he still just, slashing guys. Oh, <laughs> Bully was, he would throw Broadway, a missile is, is anyone you want to throw on the old fucking milk carton or? The the one guy I'm going to throw on the milk carton, and I, I hate to kick him when he's down because oh, I think he, kick he's him. approaching a worse start to the, this season than Broadway did his second year in Boston. It is Jeff Skinner. He's got zero oh, goals, what? one assist through 16 nine games, bananas. and then he was nine healthy scratch ups. three straight and got back in the lineup because of injuries. So I don't know what's going on there. Is Ralph Kruger not playing with the right guys, but he is struggling. <laughs> Does he they have a long-term Taylor Hall deal? They brought fucking team and then fucking went for a shit. Does he have a long-term deal? Nine nine bananas nine a year, too. For, I think for one more year, I think, or two. He's got a little bit of term left. That's that should be overpriced over whatever you want to call him over Skinner. <laughs> Fuck it, in the outhouse is where that one is. Wow. But listen, <laughs> Brian makes a great point, and you sat him out for three games. Now Ralph Kruger's job as a coach is to try to get this guy going. If I'm the yep. owner, I'm paying this guy nine million dollars. Okay, you sat him out. You can't continue to send him out, and we can't continue to have him have zero fucking goals. So it's bananas. That's a lot of bananas. He can't. No, he right, can't no. continue to play like a third, fourth line role. Yeah, like obviously you gotta get he's struggling, goal. but he's a high end skill guy. You need to play him with the Eichels and the Halls if you want this kid to have success. So, I, I don't know how they're gonna figure it out, but that's the only way they're gonna be able to do it. They got to put him on the top two lines and you know just let him try to find his game. So milk cart and updog puts Kelly Rooley's button on there. That's the best one. I'm putting the refs on again, and Broadway is calling out Jeff Skinner. Nine bananas, zero goals. Worse start than Broadway, Jimmy Hayes' second year in Boston. Um, to this men's league out here, I saw it on social media, Updog, I reached out to Princey, we couldn't figure it out, but they gave out a, a This Guy Fucks t-shirt to their player of the game. They were all sitting around, they were built like me, they just fucking like, had the barrels <laughs> out, fucking drinking beer. The one guy I could hear in the background was like, I don't know how the fuck that guy got around me there, I went, uh, Tom, whatever, <laughs> it was just, so they gave a t-shirt out. If you guys could hit us up on our social media again and just uh, send us the clip Listen, again. this is what we'll do. Yeah. Anyone who hits us up and you tell us your men's league team wants a fucking t-shirt yeah, to we'll give out to your to head, you. you got the fucking this guy fucks t-shirts. Yeah. We'll send you one and your and one for your squad. Yeah, perfect. Well done. Classy move. We got a bunch of those this guy fucks shirts, so and I thought all, it was great. And let me touch on this. For, yeah. the, for the fans, there was three of them that won our sweepstakes for my fucking up dog Bobby Orr photo. They're getting developed. Wow. I needed to go wow. in the depths. I found the you file. You came all out. You didn't have I any found left the file. <laughs> you didn't all right. Have any left. I went to Kodak. I'm getting a nice glossy print done for you. Uh, I'll work on a cheap frame and we'll send it to you. Yeah, look good. That's a sick pick. Um, real that quick, we have, a, pick, we have a Hall of Fame guest coming on and a guy who was huge to me in my rookie year. Uh, but up to real quick, the clip of you going low blocker in that exhibition game where I still can't believe they sent you down in Dallas. You wore number 20. Number twenty. Was that I just did. a training camp number? Why twenty? I've never, you know, did you have that many kills that Fuck, summer? When you what, get why old, you wear twenty? Jimmy will know <laughs> this. Month. Hey, month. Jimmy, you know this. When you when you become Mr. PTO, you don't get to quite fucking pick your numbers. That no one's really sliding down, you know, 
giving you your spot in the dressing room. Unless Frosty's the trainer. Totally. Did Frosty give you your, your number? Yeah, and he gave me 10. No, in all seriousness, I picked number 20 because of Alex Steen. They just won the cup. Um, I was the only fucking number I could choose from, really, unless I wanted to go like 43 or 93 or whatever, Dougie Gilmore. Um, but Obes, number 20, I thought it actually looked good on me. You know what? It did look good on you. Not I bad. just, Not I just bad. didn't know. I've never. I knew you wore nine. I knew I you wore quite like ten. My, I didn't quite like my Bucky that I was wearing that. What that Bucky year. were you Maybe wearing? That's why I didn't make the team. It was like the new Bauer. It was. It was shit. It made my head look really big. Up dog. When you score a goal like that, though, there's. I don't understand how you get sent down after the game. Like that buys you at least another two days. Jimmy, yeah. Who? Who the hell knows? No one will ever know. All I know is I went and won the Spangy. <laughs> and I, and I, I went out swinging. Well torn. Oh, you're a fucking beauty. And another thing, another beauty move that came up on our social media with Princey was when you had your fucking jersey on and you retired on TSN. <laughs> Fuck, did I laugh oh again? You had the Spangler Cup jersey on. But, that um, was unbelievable. Anyways, boys, I love you, Broadway. We miss you in the studio. We have an unbelievable guest coming up, a Hockey Hall of Famer and an absolute legend. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Missing Curfew, Up Dog. Uh, I'm not great at the intros, but this guy deserves one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, our first in studio guest. He played 1,451 games, 1,457 points. Stanley Cup champion in 06, 07. Six time Olympian, three bronze medals, one silver medal. Won the Calder 92, 93. Won the Rocket Richard in 98-99. Okay, enough. Won the Master yeah, in yeah, full <laughs> five oh six. The I mean, how much time? How Tame much Salani, fella, thank you for joining us. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. And the last part was hockey. I was going to say, how much time do we got? We I can mean, continue. Talk, I, Let's talk about the tennis and I the know. golf and the and the hair. That's Let's just, the same <laughs> thing as Tiger Woods when he steps up to the tee box. I know, right? I was like, yeah, I know right. I had a good career. Right? Yeah, Tiger said, hey, okay, let's go. Let's go. Good <laughs> Um First of all, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. We know you're uh, you're a busy man with the golf and tennis. And so, what have you been up to besides all that fun stuff? You know, that's pretty much. Obviously, Corona is gonna just uh, the biggest diff difference. We haven't been uh, traveling much, but uh, everything else, it, it doesn't really have bothering me too much. I play tennis in every day almost, and then I play golf a couple times a week. So very easy, yeah. almost boring life. But I enjoy. It. <laughs> so I, I've. I've I've, I've seen you play tennis and you became buddies with Roger Federer. How did that relationship come together? I know you guys became pretty good buddies over the years. Yeah, you know what? Uh, actually, so my good buddy, Jarko Niemine, was uh, in the tour like 14 years. And uh, so every time when, uh, when they came to Indian Wells, I, I went there, spent a couple of days and and then I got no Roger. And I didn't know that, uh, you know, he, he was big, uh, not hockey fan, but on the road, he, he used to play PlayStation. And his uh, Swedish coach was big hockey fan. So they always play, play, played that uh, EA Sport Hockey NHL. And I don't know, like he, he actually, he's, he, ha, he has born uh, 8881. So eight has been his number, his number as well. And then when he played uh, that, that, that PlayStation, he realized that I was very fast and I scored the goals in that game. <laughs> so then that's how he got to know me, even though we, we, we never met, but he told me the story actually about, and that's we became uh, friends and last 10 years we have know each other pretty well. And I go sometimes when, the, when he comes here, I go to his house and spend the afternoon and, so he, I, I'm the greatest guy, you know. Like I've met a lot of great athletes, but this is by far the number one. What's it like taking a forehand or like a serve from him? Do you play? You, you, I'm sure you played with him. Yeah, you know what? I can usually I don't yeah. say a lot of good things about my by myself, but uh, I'm the only guy who has he has never beat. So we played. <laughs> so so when Yarko Yarko played his last match uh, in Helsinki in front of fifteen thousand people, I don't know why he thought that they can sell the, the, the full house. So they said, how about if you and me play against Federer and Peter Forsberg? Okay. In front of 15,000 people, so we're gonna create maybe more hockey fans in the stands. We sold that thing in four hours. Wow. And not because of us. Obviously, Roger, he doesn't do that very often. <laughs> yeah. But so me and Jarko, we beat uh, Forsberg and Federer 6 4. And, and uh, I always try to remind Roger that, that I'm still the guy that you haven't beat. beat <laughs> yeah. and, and he's like, come on, we have to take a rematch. I said, no fucking no chance. No fucking chance. No. Hey, Flash, I mean, you, your longevity was impressive as a hockey player, but what 
the thing with Roger impresses you the most with, I mean, because tennis is grueling on your knees and your back. And I mean, we played pickleball, a couple games of pickleball, and I'm fucking. <laughs> what impresses you the most about Roger's consistency? Yeah, you know what, this guy, first of all, when you watch him playing, he never gets tired. So his uh, stamina is like something like I've never seen. And, but he really looks after himself, you know, he does everything right away. He has a 20, 20 people uh, traveling with him. He has a private chef, he has a private uh, coach, obviously have private uh, physiotherapy, uh, uh, massage guys. He has two tutors with, uh, he has two set of uh, twins. Okay. So oh, cool. he has a two uh, 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 like a teachers, and both boys and girls they have a also personal like a trainer for the for the kids. Oh, wow. So obviously, like only thing what he has to do is focus in tennis, and you know what his passion for the game is something that you know really impressed me because he loves the game. He's he's gonna be forty years old and. Uh, he still loves the game, and that's what it takes if you want to play long. I played in Switzerland this past year. I went over for four months um, to kind of close off my hockey career, and all the Swiss kids over there, they absolutely like idolize him. Yeah. He's got a place he built on the lake in Rappersville, and every time we'd, we'd play them, they were one of our rivals. We'd go over there, and they'd be like, all right, this is Roger. This is like Roger Town right here. Built yeah. this beautiful shack. <laughs> like he's, he's an absolute legend, not only worldwide, but you know, kids and... Um, just one of the guys that has been so elite for so long. But longevity is, is huge. Taking hunger. care of your body, listening to your body, getting yeah. the right treatment. I, I guess for me, Tim, it was just the hunger, right? And you did it. You won your Stanley Cup later in your career, but then you continue to play on four or five years after just to stay hungry and still want to compete, right? Yeah, the thing is, a lot of times you learn to love the game even when you get older. So that's what, the, like what I said, like after... 2005 that lockout I got my knee done and the Colorado year was very tough for me but I couldn't really use my speed and I kind of lost the passion a little bit and I decided I'm gonna have this surgery and if if, if, if it's not gonna be 100% I'm not gonna play anymore because it's like I said it's all about having, having fun and, and get, uh, you know having enough passion to compete you know and then when I realized my, my knee is almost 100% I enjoy the game most ever you know I, yeah. I, I didn't have an individual goals anymore i just wanted to win i wanted to enjoy every day and that's why I, it, it it was a good joke about one more year thing <laughs> yeah. but i i really tried to retire after every year so and then i said you know this is my last year i'm gonna do everything what it takes to do the training in the summer i do the right things uh, and then after the season let's see how how much I have left, you know, and then <laughs> I came back nine more years, but, uh, yeah, but, was, but hey. that was my motivation. Yeah, yeah. You know, I leave everything out there. I don't want to sign three year deal. I want this only this is last year and that's it. And that's, I think it really helped me, you yeah. know. It was always great with the summer skates, right? Because we, we weren't like those guys. It was different even now kids skate all year round, right? So we would start skating maybe August one or whatever, right? And then week would go by and then the flash would show up, right? A couple of weeks in, we're like, oh fuck, training camp. Still got, he right, still got right, it. Right around the corner and the flash is here and the Getsy would show up. And I know once you did retire, those skates in the summertime, they lost a ups. It wasn't quite as enjoyable yeah. without you out there. They, they, lost the, you, they yeah, lost the flash. They lost, they lost the, the flash. They the game. And yeah. I just remember you getting out there and you know, it's hard in August. I'm like, well, if Tame was out here, you know, having fun, snapping around. So you always pushed us guys that would, you know, it sucks skating before the training camp. Do you started. remember how many times we were driving up to 405 to go skate with the LA guys during that lockout year? And you were still going. You were still going strong. Yeah, but that yeah. was like, you know, what is it, 2012? We, we had no idea if we were even playing, no idea if you're still going to go one more year. And it was, you know, seeing the motivation out of out of you, Timu, and then, you know, the trickle-down effect to all the older guys that we were skating with at the time, yeah. you're just like, this is why we're still doing it. We love the game. We yeah, I remember Saka was a big part of that too, with that yeah. lockout year. So he, was a, he was actually listening to the conversation. So I remember we'd show up one day at the old Anaheim Ice and Saka would be like, yeah, it's going pretty well. And then the next week he's like, no, nah, there's no way we're playing. I'm like, oh, why are we going to go out here and skate then? But, um, I, was, I was in charge of just the music that whole year. Yeah. Getsy would be like, Upshaw, would you get on the fucking ice already? I'd be trying to work the, I'd be trying to work the iPod. And the, yeah. that, that Anaheim Ice was a tough, tough ice barn to go. Yeah, I know you missed I the, hate that. I know, oh you missed the new building too that they got oh there. god but have you seen that now i've never been there oh. is it nice? it's, it's awesome it's I, I, game way too late it's, it's a <laughs> paradise it's a paradise for hockey players and you know these young guys who goes in that locker room 
as a first NHL practice facility, they, they have no idea <laughs> what, what, we, what we had before. We, we didn't even have the lounge in the shit <laughs> We are freezing in there. Like, there's no heaters. I mean, you could, at the practice rink, if, if Table wanted to have a cup of coffee, you'd have to sit in the trainer's room. There was no lounge at Anaheim Ice, remember? Yeah, I had a coffee or tea on. I didn't, I didn't even drink. I just wanted want to keep my hands warm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Table, I want to talk to you about, about Finnish hockey. Obviously, you were a huge ambassador of where it came. And I went over there and played one year in, in Hamelina. And... You know, I saw these young Finnish kids, how hard they worked. And I remember texting up and loops and be like, boys, this country's coming. And the way they've come in junior hockey and the, even in world championships, you must be pretty proud of how far Finland's come for such a small country. Very proud. But the, but hockey is like the same thing than it's in Canada. It's number one sport. Every little kid, and I think most of the girls, they have tried some point in their life playing hockey, you know. And it's like a national, it's the biggest thing there, you know. So I think that helps a lot. But the program that we have there and, and all the old players who stayed in the game and they, they want to, you know, chip it in and, and give give something back, just created a great program, you know. And uh, we have a lot of pride uh, to do things right. And and now we have, I think this year we have only f- over 50 players who has played in NHL. That's a big wow. number for only 5 million uh, yeah. people country, you know. So... Um, uh, it's. I mean, it's all about passion and yeah, fun, I mean, and, and also it's an opportunity. You know, we have a rink almost every corner. Yeah, yeah. Here, my, when when my boys start playing hockey here, uh, there's only two or three rinks, and they have to share the the one hour ice with another team. There's two yeah. teams in one sheet. <laughs> yeah, you know, how you can you know expecting yeah. that summer's gonna you know? Yeah, you need you, more you're rinks. Thousands of hours behind them. You know yeah. the program. Yeah. The Finns were always so badass when, but like my World Juniors, like t- they were always the strongest ones that gave us the most, like the hardest games to play against. And to, like Rutu back in Tuomo oh, Rutu, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, was bulldog, yeah. he was a bulldog. Yeah, he was a bulldog. Yeah, he was. But that's <laughs> that was how they all played. I mean, yeah. Besides you, you, I mean, you didn't hit very many guys, but you no. just skate by them all. Yeah, but th- these guys were they wanted to engage. Like yeah. it was for it was, me, it was Tamo, and I played in the the, the Liga League over there, and it was just like. I went there late, and I was, I was never the maybe the best condition guy. But these guys are how hard they worked at the rink and running the stairs, and then the junior program was the same thing. And just I met some some really great guys there, but their their passion and their dedication to the game blew me away. I was like, these guys are they take it pretty seriously. They go three hours before the practice, yeah. and they, they go to weights and they go run and they uh, uh, they they stretch like twenty minutes, and, and they 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 live like athletes there, and that. But that's what it takes, you know, like uh, uh, there's a lot of good coaches and good programs and, and you know, they want to take the best kids, you know, and if you're not, if, if you don't like it, you're out, you know. So they they only want to focus the kids who has 100%, uh, you know, into it. And yeah. they, they, they want to get no, better. They, they, you're they, like, practice is over, guys. I'm going to fucking kick the feet up. Yeah, what do you guys I remember, <laughs> I, I wish I knew this guy's name, Tim. Well, you may or may not. He was our Finnish D coach. He was bald head. He had, he had lost his, uh, a bit of his sight playing hockey. And um, he was just a hardcore Finnish coach. And he saw me, this like, fat veteran coming over there, and he was <laughs> licking his chops. And I just remember, like, every day it was, like, running stairs, doing extra. But I, I finally got into shape. And the, the, the hockey was what, what blew me away. The league is very, very good over there. I was like... I didn't know what to expect, but the, the league itself is really impressive. It's very good, and, and you know, obviously, it's a big ice surface. It's yeah. a different style of hockey, you know, and uh, you know, it, there's so much more skating and, and more positioning, and there's not so many battles and and uh, and uh, uh, like physical aspect is not really there. So the the guys who are used to grow up here and they play tough and a lot, lot of battles, you don't like you almost feel that. You know, you can't play your game. So that's why I think we have we always have have a little advantage in the Olympics when we went to big rink against yeah. USA or Canada because we had that extra time, we had that extra room. So I think that was benefiting for us for sure. You know, do you like today's game, Timo? Do you like? Would you like to play in today's game or or back? You know, when you came in the league in the '90s, were you? Um, like, what do you see now as, as the better game for, for either fans or the players playing in it? Well, obviously, the skill level and skating, uh, you know, it's so much better than overall that it used to be. I think I don't think the first and second line has, second line has changed too much, but I think the third and fourth yeah. line, that's a huge difference. And uh, But, you know, I think this, I, I love to watch this, this hockey. It's so... 
there's no grinding and holding and crapping anymore. But same hand, <laughs> in old old time hockey, that that was a real hockey. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. the toughness and the grinding and taking the beating and the fear factor, that was there. There's nothing anymore. Uh, and, and so I kind of miss the old days as well. And I think you know something between those two would be probably the perfect yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, I, I remember when I came to the league, there, you, you had to really be a little scared before you go to play and say, you know what, I, I got to keep my head up. I have to, you know, at the same hand, you have to show that you're tough, especially mentally, because I, I, didn't, I didn't fight like, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's a, there's so you many different to. kind of toughness. Like, I think my toughness was mentally, I didn't give up and, I, and, I, and I, I took a lot of hits, you know, but of course I tried to avoid them. Yeah. But uh, the game was different, you know, and, uh, but obviously, you know, every team right now has unbelievable hockey players and it's fun to watch, you know, yeah. it's, uh, like I said, the skill level and, and skating, you know, it's just like, it's like did art. You, did you see that Zegers last night try to do that? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, he had him too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he stepped over a stick. I mean, uh, what's his name? Scandella took a high stick and was laying in the corner, loses his two front teeth. His stick was laying right behind the net. Yeah. And Zegers steps over the stick as he's putting it like on his twig. I mean, his skills, It would have been the best first goal of all time. His skill is next level, but... Um, Tamo, I wanted to ask you about, you know, you come to the NHL, you score 76 as a rookie. And I just like, I played with you when I was a rookie. And I just always thought that, like, what did you think when you first came over here, straight into it with that much success? Obviously, the city of Winnipeg, they still love you to this day. Was it just like, you know, holy shit? Or, or what were you thinking when you had that much success early? Well, let's go back a little bit. Uh, uh, when I was 18, I got drafted and, and I came, I was in the army. I was serving my, in Finland, we have a, a mandatory army service. So I, I, I came to training camp in, uh, in uh, actually to Winnipeg, went to the Moncton, Moncton. Yeah. And uh, you know, I realized like how, first of all, this is the funniest story. I went there and I think still at the time, you know, the, the indi indi uh, w invitation was that, uh, make sure you take your golf clubs with you. Because the, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the guys Winnipeg. played golf after every <laughs> practice in the training camp. It was 30 days training camp. But to be honest, I remember they always, the old guys were overweight. And, you know, I thought that, uh, is this really yeah. age? Yeah. They went to camp to get shit. <laughs> yeah, I, you yeah. know, I, I was like already like skating four weeks with my team. I was unbelievable shape. So then after the practice, we did those back skating, like lines, like blue line, red line, back, all, blue line, all the way. And I always used to go full speed. So when I was coming back the last time, they were still coming to the blue line. And, they, they, and, and those guys got mad. They, and, and the assistant coach came to me and said, hey, 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 hey slow down. <laughs> like, hey, rookie, they're gonna kill you, but slow down. <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, so I was there only two weeks and I, I played one exhibition game against, against uh, Minnesota. But then I was supposed to come next day, I mean, next year uh, to NHL, I broke my leg. But they, they invited me to the playoffs and uh, they played first round against uh, Oilers. And I always remember, I, I watched those two games and I was shaking after the, the games. I thought there's no way I can play in this league. Yeah. It was so violent, <laughs> it was so tough. It was the, like, I, I was scared. I said, I, I, I called I my dad, I spoke. said, I don't know if I can play this. These guys, are, they are animals. Like they, you know, <laughs> but I went, <laughs> home, I I went home and, and that was so big motivation boost for me. I said, you know what, I got, if I'm going to play in this league, I got, I got to do a lot of more work and I got to be ready because these guys are, this is like, it's a war out there. And obviously Winnipeg and, and, and Oilers, that was like, uh, you know, play, play yeah. of hockey is different hockey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so I came, I was 22 when I came to the league, so I wasn't like a normal rookie anymore. Oh, okay. But obviously we didn't have a great team. So I got right away in the first, first line, I played with the best players and Phil Housley, who, was, who probably passed like 50 goals. Like we have this set up plays and you know, 
and there's no scouting like a bit like a video like like now yeah. I, I feel it's over coaching nice. right now nice little video i like that i saw one time <laughs> that after the game somebody gave like a vhs uh, Cassette, tape for yeah. somebody like and and, and we are like what porno. is that? Oh, it's a, <laughs> it was a other porno. team's uh, p- uh, power play. We had a power play. I don't think a lot of teams figure out our power play until Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was different era, but obviously, you know, I, I, the confidence what I got right away and uh, and things started going so well. It was like a snowball going down the hill. I got more confident. But obviously, 76 goals, I could never, never in my wildest dreams to think about yeah. that I can do that. And I didn't really reala- realize what, what I did until like, Maybe three, four years after, when when I realized I can't score seventy anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, geez, I kind of set the bar a little Shit, high. They start so to watch video. That, my career number wise went down. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta That's ask right. you. This is a personal question too. The celebration. I mean, did you did you have it <laughs> like did you have it planned? Because it's it's still the te- the test of time. When you still see it, it still looks sick. But was it just a reaction, probably, or or because it was still just like yeah, pretty sick. It was. Uh, I saw that one time when I was like twelve. I saw the one Finnish guy did in the Finnish league when he scored the big, uh, big uh, goal, and I said that I, that would be nice to do someday. Yeah. So then actually I did that like uh, uh, the Finnish uh, championship final when I scored the game winning goal. But that that I I was not planning that you yeah. know, and, and it was just obviously it's a, it's a fun to watch right now. But now I still feel a little bit embarrassed when I see that. <laughs> but I was so pumped. I mean, oh yeah, just cool. like, uh, you probably were blacked out. Yeah, right? yeah you probably exactly. just, you don't even so, know. Yeah. Yeah. Broadway, it's Broadway. I wish you were sitting right here I, with us. I so wish I, I was there too, but I'm, I'm enjoying oh, this conversation. I'm loving it because uh, Timo, you've been one of my favorite players ever since. I got. A, I told these guys a funny story. My almost my welcome to NHL moment was I lined up next to you and I had a stick that says uh, "Happy Eighth Birthday" from Timo Solani, and I kind of wanted to ask you for like a Happy Twenty Fifth one, but I didn't have the balls to do it at the time. But so you got to send me a birthday gift here. But the big thing that I want to talk to you about here is. Uh, like you said, coming into this league, it's it was very violent. Obviously, completely different than playing in Finland. It, to be able to get through a league like the like the NHL, you need to have guys in your team like Big Wolf Kachuk. So, how was it playing with him? And do you have any fun stories with Big Wolf Kachuk? <laughs> a lot of good stories, you know. <laughs> and uh, obviously, we were both both rookies at uh, yeah. the uh, same time. And uh, also, Alexey Zhamnov. We all played. We have a rookie line. Uh, we we all scored over twenty goals. Actually, we have four guys who scored the four, uh, over 20 goals, which is not very like normal thing. But you know, that's why it was so important to have a guys like Walt and Ty Domi and Chris King and those guys because they make sure that we can just play hockey and we don't have to worry about anything stupid, you know. And uh, and that's what I, I kind of missed this uh, today's hockey. I think uh, you know it's sad that there's not guys who can protect you anymore and and. I personally like, I enjoy to watch fights, you know, yeah. and, and a lot, yeah. of, lot of guys don't, but, uh, you know, Walt was the, <clears throat> like a workhorse and, and, and he was always underrated about how he saw the game and how smart player he was. He was a big, strong guy with the good hands and stuff, so uh, that's why he had so great ca- uh, career as well, but uh, it was fun, fun uh, times to play with, uh, with those guys. Jamno was like computer. He was perfect to see the game and great passer. And then Walt was grinding in the corners and make room for uh, ourselves. And 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 around the net he was magic. You know, he, uh, if he shoot there fifty bucks forty nine, he somehow he touched it. So uh, great, great memories, great times with yeah. those guys. And obviously starting in, in Winnipeg, you know, where, where hockey is the biggest thing. And just you know living the life there and realize how. You know how excited the people are if you're a hockey player and, and you yeah. treat them well. It was it was dream come true to start uh, my career in Winnipeg. It must still because how many years did you play there? Did you say three years or how many how many years did you play in Winnipeg? Three and a half years. Yeah, because and listen, I play with you. You're the ultimate teammate, but the fans there they still love you, and you're only there for three and a half years. It still must mean a lot to you. Like I remember you went back for the playoffs a couple years ago, and you're in the suite. They gave you the standing mm-hmm. O. Like, yeah, you're the unbelievable, but that still must feel good to you that you're only there for that short time and they still care about you that much. Absolutely, and you know, like, like you know, I'm, I'm the guy. Like, I like to talk to people. I'm, yeah. I'm very friendly, and I, and and I think it's e- people it's easy to come to me and, and say a couple of words. So I think that's what the, the relationship with, we created with the fans. Uh, it was so special, you know. And uh, I always uh, felt that you know, I don't mind to sign autographs. I, I want to treat the fans well yeah. and. And uh, uh, 
if it took two hours after the game to sign autographs when they were waiting tw below 20 weather. Yeah, they deserve they, it. They deserve yeah. it. And I think they appreciate that so much, you know, and, and we both were happy, you know. It's, I always said that, you know, you know, we would never ho have a hockey in this level without the fans. And I, I, I really try to, you know, look after them and, and, and you know, make them feel good about this. Yeah. Well, you did a great job because they still love you there. And I know this is, do you remember your rookie party? Because I got a rookie story party of mine about you. But do you remember your rookie party in Winnipeg, where it was or who? You know, do you remember any of that? Yeah, it was, uh, <clears throat> actually, we, I think we had a six rookies. Because oh. it, that was the time when the, they opened the borders in Russia. So we had a, we had a six guys total. It's a Baron Steakhouse, Steakhouse in Tampa Bay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and uh, nice wine list. There. Yeah, great wine. It's list. unbelievable. <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> but a, but it's, a tomahawk. Uh, it was kind of pretty easy. Uh, we just have to sing and and tell a couple of jokes and stuff. And I think the bill was on like five hundred fifty bucks, which is like <laughs> oh, we were steal. so lucky. Uh, but I always remember our our captain was Troy Murray. Okay. And uh, after a couple of wines, like he, I don't know where he got this trick, but uh, he ate actually the the uh, the wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm not I'm not joking. He took the glass like this. He bit like this. <laughs> then 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 not a piece, and only that uh, that leg was left anymore. I'm like, <laughs> what, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> But, but it was funny because that year was the first year that they didn't do the shaving and, and yeah. for the rookies. So I was actually, we were lucky that we, we got a pretty yeah, good uh, treatment. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. So for, so for mine, I, I want to get into the Stanley Cup team that I was a part of with you. We'll get to that. Um, but my rookie party was in Dallas and we had an unbelievable start. Remember we won, you know, 10 or 13 straight to get it going. And I was lucky enough to sit in the corner with Flash and Getsy and Prongs was over there. So... I just remember I was at my rookie dinner at what's the, the state calls in Dallas Earl and Sam's or Sam's and uh, it's yeah yeah um, Nick, and Nick and Sam's, Sam's or something yeah, like Nick that right? yeah so I'm like having a great time and just enjoyed it and this beauty over here orders two steaks he had like the, the rib on <laughs> do you remember that I'm like I'm like what a legend I'm like boys pets table just ordered two yeah. steaks that's fucking nationally moved right yeah, there the lobster tail <laughs> yeah. and, and, I, and I, I used to order one Louis thirteen yeah she did. and then you know we had shots yeah. with the rookies and and. Uh, Obviously, that was like 2,500 20, uh, bottle, <laughs> but, uh, and then I always offered that uh, one of the yeah. rookies, but they never wanted to take it, so I kept it. <laughs> <laughs> Have another. Yeah, oh, good. Okay, I'll take it over. That is um, good stuff. Yeah, no, that was that was one of the best. I mean, I always told my rookies, after my career went on, like, I'm like, it's going to cost you a bit of money here, boys, but it's going to be the, one of the best nights of your career. Like, I just remember that. I, I don't know if you remember the practice the next day in Dallas, but... I just remember one guy, we, I won't mention his name, but we made him go to the back of the line the entire practice. Remember? I he, think it was a defenseman. It was well, a right? defenseman. He remember he couldn't get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't put his gear on. But um, Tima, I, I want to ask yeah. you, I want to ask you some, something I admired to a lot of players that I played with who were older and who had kids that used to come into the room and like kind of watch their dad get dressed and watch him put on his tie mm -hmm. and go to the games and get to hang out with all the players after. Um, a guy, a good buddy of mine, we always talk about him on the pod, Alex Steen, who you probably play with his old man. And he was in the dressing room in, in Winnipeg, you know, back in the day as a, as a young kid looking at everyone's stick. And your kids did the same. Could you touch on kind of like, you know, what that does to your, your, to your kids as they grow up older and, and they're hungered maybe if they do like hockey, they've seen it at that level and they know all the players and just kind of what that was like. Because I, I admire it. I, I see Steener, you know, for, for a generation, he's got to watch, you know, you and Shane Doan and all these guys and learn from them. Um, you know, did your kids pick up on anything you guys did? Well, obviously a lot of swearing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just remember Flash's kids were buzzing around the yeah. room. I'm like, yeah. it's, but it's great. It's yeah. like the best thing. It it so you know what? They were they were actually waiting every day that uh, they can come to the locker room because they can get the wild and they can do whatever they want. At, the, at, the, at least they felt like that way. <laughs> and you know, I, I think for them it was not like, wow, this is the NHL players. Yeah. They're just environment that people are having fun. And they enjoy the time together. I always remember when my, my boys were like like first or second grader and, and they asked in school what your uh, father is doing for a living. So it, it was my son's turn. He's, he's like, um, I don't really know. Um, sometimes he plays hockey, sometimes <laughs> he, he goes golf. golf and, <laughs> and the teacher said, well, that's not the, really the job. 
But he, he couldn't explain to, to the teacher that actually <laughs> it is my job. <laughs> but uh, but those, are, those are great me- memories. And I always remember the Stanley Cup year, uh, especially my youngest boy, Levi. We were down against Columbus, uh, three nothing after second. And Carla was, she went bananas. Yeah. She start yelling, uh, like, you know, how, yeah, how, uh, yeah, yeah, and motivate the guys to, you know, uh, do better. And then all of a sudden, during the seven minutes before we went to the third period, door opens, Randy's yell, yelling, and Levy comes and, and says, Dad, I said, <laughs> get up, get up. And he looks the coach, okay. And like, Randy's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> so then, you know, he went to the coach's office and I, I said, boys, boys, <laughs> we better win this match. <laughs> and we won four, three. Yeah. And then Carl like, came after the game, he was in good mood. Yeah. Where, where's the fucking our security? <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> but I, I, you know what, I think my boys and uh, everybody who has a chance to come uh, hang around the locker room, uh, uh, they, some point they realize, you know what, what a special yeah. time that was. And I always remember 2007, we won the cup. We are celebrating in a, in a, you know, mid, mid eyes with the, with the Stanley Cup. And at the end, my two boys, uh, Brad May's son, neither my boys, they were just shooting pucks in the net. They didn't care about winning Stanley Cup. <laughs> so we were <laughs> just, just like, it was just like, it was their game. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. No, and, and when I saw your kids as a rookie bounce around, then as, you know, summer skates went on, Getsy's kids would show up. And it's something that me and Uppy and Broadway didn't really get to, you know, enjoy as a player, right? We, we never had kids. So it's one of those things looking back that was, was pretty cool, I'm sure. But Flash, I want to ask you about that 017, man. Like it was my rookie year and I just remember coming in there and you and Prongs and Niedermeyer and Andy McDonald and just the, how quick we gelled. And, and I unfortunately got traded at the deadline, but just talk about that. Like I knew that day I got traded that you guys were gonna win the Stanley Cup unless something, yeah. like you got hurt in Prongs, unless something was, we were that good. We were that good and you know, it was perfect chemistry and perfect, like there's a role for everybody. And everybody, like, no, I, I don't think that team had any players who were looking for my job or looking for your job. I think they all, the roles were pretty much already, yeah. you know, like, we just wanted to do our role and take the pride to do as good as we can. And I think we only invite like, like 30 players in the camp. So we, we start right away when we left a year before, we went to the conference final. And and then we we got the pronger in the in the uh, Blue Pulcher, yeah yeah in the in the summertime, but the, the the team was already like this is our team and go and work things out yeah and that's what we, I think we played first seventeen games we didn't lose in re- yeah, regulation we didn't lose the regulation and uh, our training camps with the Carlisle uh, camps were so hard and but so we were in the shape too <laughs> yeah you know? we were there's no shortcuts remember that, you used uh, to make us push the nets oh. I was like is this really fucking he's, he's barbaric yeah, yeah. pushing the, somebody's pushing the net I'm like I don't know if Tamer needs to be doing that <laughs> you know what it, but it was like you knew that you're gonna be in great shape and yeah. obviously we tried to build the momentum in the playoffs and stuff and but that team has had everything you know and and I always think about that if I put all the champions teams champion uh, teams against each other I, I I could put our team against anybody yeah. it was it was it has uh, it has everything we had a toughness we had a we had a speed we had skills we had a probably Jiggy. the best third line third best line, line hockey. yeah Paulson Mo and and, and and then uh, Chiguer and Briscalo. We have, it was full. <laughs> it was full, full package, yeah. you know. And uh, uh, what a year that was! You yeah, know, it was it just was, like I remember, and I don't know if you remember this. You called me when I got traded. So like PJ, our buddy, he picked me up, and I was, I was like devastated because like I knew how good we were. And Tamo called me, and he was like, "Fuck!" I talked to Brian Burke and Randy, and I told him not to trade anyone. Like. And Burke, you got a first rounder for me, so I'm not blaming Brian Burke. I tend to get that, but it's also stuck, always stuck up to me. I'm like, fuck, Timo didn't have to, you know, call me and, and do that. But I remember watching you guys. It was one of the hardest things through my experience being such, you know, being on that team yeah. for so long, and then I'm just so happy for you and getting the boys. But at the same time, having that, like, man, I was two days away from being part of that because I knew no one was going to beat you guys. Well, that, that's why I, I, I talk with Brian Burke. I said, this guy, this team is so special. And the chemistry is unbelievable. I don't do anything. Like, you don't have to do anything. We don't need anybody. Yeah. And, uh, and then, like, OB, you know, he, he, the guy is like, 
love guys like him. Like he comes to rink every day with a smile. He work hard. He's he's uh, making jokes. He's uh, like he's making the good environment there. And then when you see, I see all we're like, fuck why? <laughs> like <laughs> we don't golfing need a, buddy. He's gone. We don't need a first rounder now. Yeah, we totally. need the guys who like it's like a family, you know. And you don't want to see anybody go and. That's why, guys. I'm, I'm so sorry because it's 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 always uh, tough to lose yeah. a friend and a good guy in the team, you know. It was that family feel, and I put on some other good teams and met some great guys along the way. But that, when you put our skill and the family feel like that, and the one guy I wanted to just ask you about before I turn it over to ups is, is Getzlav. You know, you've seen Getzy, and I know how much Getzy respects you and how much you've done for him, and you've seen him grow. And just what can you say about him now and and what he's done and what he means to you he's just he means a lot to me gets yeah i, I, I always remember when gets and perry game <clears throat> and i saw how much talent and and, and uh, how how good they I, i could see right away how good these guys can be and obviously they, they were a big part of the stanley cup team and, and they uh but i i think ryan gets off is <clears throat> so good i could put him in, on his best day i don't think there's another player like him you know mm -hmm. I always remember like the one uh, playoff series against I think they played against Oilers uh, and uh, he was machine you know mm -hmm. for some reason I, I expecting more from Getsy and uh, he, I think he's a little bit inconsistent about uh, emotionally I think and but like I said like if I put all the best players on the best day against each other, I, I, I choose to rank Getzlaff. He, he, he can do everything. He can fight, he can hit, he can be mean, he's unbelievable skills, he can see the game well, he's a good skater, he's just like machine, you know. But I feel sorry for him right now, like yeah. he's uh, like playing the team that, you know, it's just rebuilding and, and you can kind of see that his excitement level is not really right there. Yeah. And, and it's a different, obviously, era right now, but Getsy, you know, he's a he's a great guy, and, and we and we have a lot had a great time together, and um, he's gonna be in the Hall of Fame one day, and I'm very proud of him what he has done. Yeah, me too. And and I've I've had this conversation with Getsy, and I know it means a lot for him to play for only the Ducks, and I get that, but I I think I'd it's like time. to see him go for maybe one more playoff As run and I. get re-energized and play yeah. on a good team and and be part of you know getting that Stanley Cup for a different organization maybe. Yeah, and I, I think you know sometimes some way like when you win your first. Stanley Cup your first year. Yeah. You probably think that I'm going to win three, four, <laughs> five, four, four, or, or when you score 76. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and then, you know, we had a we had a really good team, uh, maybe uh, seven, eight more years. Yeah, you guys. And, and I, I really was expecting we're going to win another one. It didn't happen. And now, like, now he has to, like I said, excitement. When it's not there, you can be only like average. Yeah. So that's why, I, personally, I like to see him as well to go somewhere where he can make a difference, you know. Yeah. And obviously, I don't think he can score 100 points anymore, uh, but he can be a big factor when he gets excited and he can help any team so many different ways. I agree. But right now, when it's, you know, you see his, his body language is like, like yeah. what are yeah. we doing? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's got to be tough. Yeah. No yeah. But you have rubbed off on him. I mean, he's got his place up at Kodo. He loves his cars. Yeah. I mean, Fuck, he, he loves his cars. He, he has a good his, program. He has a good, <laughs> he's got he a good, does have a good program. Other than the hair, I mean, he's team with Solani <laughs> Jr. I mean, big, beautiful family, uh, you know, boats. Yeah. Jeez, he's, yeah, gets his. He's living the life, and that's how it should be, you know. Yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah, he deserves it. I mean, he played, yeah. he's a generational Timo, player. Like, yeah. Timo, well, I wanted to ask you about that because I remember as a young kid coming into the league and one of my favorite moments was getting off the bus in Anaheim and seeing that lineup of cars. <laughs> and I just wanted to ask you personally, who on the team other than yourself, because I know you're a big car guy, who had the best car? And Steve Montador, God bless him, we always wanted to know, was that Fisker car yours? We yeah. had a bet. He said it was yours. <laughs> I had no idea who it yeah. was, but I wanted the answer if that was yours. It was, it was mine, yeah, and, and long, long time yeah. cars were one of my biggest passions. I had 43 cars at the one time, which is kind of like <laughs> stupid, no, crazy. It's, it's, but, legendary. it's legendary. But to be honest, my, my dream was always wake up. But this, this sounds very bad, but, no, no, but uh, my dream was when I was a young guy that I wake up in the beautiful 
place and weather and I have a problem to pick up the right car <laughs> and uh, I was uh, kind of living that dream you know and uh, and uh, luckily I don't I'm not anymore like that but I still love the cars but like you said I think our team and I think Dallas as well Dallas, Dallas had Dallas the team. best cars and and I, all the players love that you know yeah, they always yeah. oh, are driving now you know <laughs> but I think uh, well, get, like I said, Getsy loves the car. He, he is uh, he always drive, driving nice cars. But now, even now, I think there's a there's a guys who has a nice Bentley's and and yeah. and, and I think uh, Sergei Federer have a he had a nice Ferrari. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, it's some guys like Scotty Niedermeyer. <laughs> he drove his Prius, didn't he? he, he you know, he didn't like have a Paul Korea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh. We, <laughs> we can talk for days and we should talk We're gonna about talk, it. Yeah, let's talk he was my favorite yeah. player growing yeah. up and I got to play with him. I remember where I was when I got the, the text from my agent that we that Nashville, you know, signed Paul Korea and it was just for me like it was everything. And then getting to know him, you know, you learn so much about what makes a guy tick and PK is so unique, you know, from the way he takes care of his body to oh. the to the way he walks to the rink, well, he won't walk to the rink. He'll take a car even if it's across the street. He wants to save his legs. Won't walk up this. <laughs> won't walk up the stairs on a game day. No, not a chance. Smart. You know, it's it's so routine with him. Um, and he sleep in a different room other than his wife on the game days too. He, of course, he doesn't yeah. want any any disturbance. You know. <laughs> yeah. So so how you and I, sure. how how did you guys click so much? Because you're you're not so much like that. Maybe that's why you guys did click. You were good for each other. He, I think we both learned a lot from each other. Yeah. You know, and I always remember the first time when uh, when uh, I got traded. Uh, I met a team in uh, Long Island, and when we got to the bus to the hotel, he ran to the uh, inside so he doesn't have to sign autographs. So then we got the room, and, and he takes off and he goes check out the exits, how he can sneak out from the hotel to not to meet anybody or fans. And I looked at Libby and said, dude, that's a tough life, you know, that's yeah. not, you know, like, just, you gotta loosen up, you know. Every night he went to bed 10 o'clock, doesn't matter if it's East, East uh, uh, Coast time or our time here. 10 o'clock, mouth guard on, wrist sprays on, and I said, it's seven o'clock in California, like even my kids doesn't go to bed at this time. But he had, a, like you said, he had a routines, routines, routines. And, I, and it was so funny because he, he had a wrist, uh, wristband on. Like, and I asked, what are you doing? He said, well, one time I was sleeping like this and my wrist was sore a couple of weeks, so I don't want to take any chance. <laughs> so then we had a one, a one day trip to Phoenix and uh, I took my, my son's uh, little uh, shin pads. So right when he started putting the wristbands on, <laughs> I took my machine pads and I, I stopped putting it with tape and he looks, what are you doing? I said, well, I heard, I heard my knee one time I was sleeping, so I don't want to take it. He's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> he got so mad. <laughs> but like you said, he, everything what he does, it's 100%. Like everything has to be so perfect. Even when he, when he eats, he chews his food 40 times. Yeah. He took forever. I said, "Let's go." <laughs> but and, uh, taping his shin pads the same amount of rolls, the same on his knob. He was hey, his, his knob. knob he, when he cut his uh, sticks, first of all, it, it looks up. like ten minutes. It had to be perfect, and then he was taping another ten minutes. I'm like, God, this <laughs> poor guy has a tough <laughs> life. <laughs> uh, but uh, it worked for him. You know, poor Val. Poor Val. To see oh. that every day. I mean. That's his hey, has yeah. any any other player take uh, so much uh, shit uh, from the from the teammates and Paul career? I don't think so. Not, not a, a chance. Even close. Yeah. And did he love it? Like when you would chirp him? He, oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, loves so, it. He doesn't yeah, mind. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. mind. It. Incredible athlete. Do you still see yeah. him? Do you surf oh with yeah, him? Do you surf with him or you, guys... you know what? I only surf a couple of times with yeah. him, but uh, yeah, we go to dinners. He, he first of all, he knows all the best restaurants, to sushi places and. And and places like it's almost like you can't even find. Yeah. And Hidden then gems, he, yeah. and like so he has a passion for food, but he still lives in his bubble. He surf every day and very meditate every day and work work out every day, have a nap every day. Yeah. And, <laughs> that's crazy. And uh, but you know I'm so happy for him. He's yeah. uh, he's happy and that's what it takes. I, I want to talk about Tamu's pregame ritual. It's a little bit different than that. So T, T would come in what maybe ten minutes before warm up or. So first of all, first of all, my I couldn't be the guy that who comes 
even two hours no, before yeah, the game. Yeah. I try to be, if, la- if you have a, a seven o'clock game, it was 5.20 uh, meeting. meeting. So I try to game like 5.10 and and I changed and, and those meetings, I, I thought we have way too many meetings. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> we, we would go over and over, same sheet. I'm like, really? Oh, like, dude, like, yeah. we, we got this, yeah, okay. Yeah, give me the puck, I yeah. got it, give me the puck. <laughs> so, so then I start, I, and then I just went, went to watch TV or something and then, uh, I start stretching. Uh, uh, if, if the warm up was six, tw- six yeah, thirty, six thirty probably. So six ten, I start stretching like ten fifteen minutes, and then when it was four minutes to go to the warm up, I start yeah, stretching yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to be a little hurry, so that was the, for me. Like now, it's time game on to game on. Yeah. And one thing you did that I I took from you throughout my career is you would come in at that time and while you were getting ready then you would go around the room you would go up all right here we go up OB, and you would go to every single guy yeah and it was something my rookie year that just like it engaged our whole room all right flashes in here he's doing his thing and then to me as a rook i was like all right now it's time to get serious was that something you always did or someone passed on to you yeah when i was young and i believe in finnish league we had one teammate who did the same thing and i i felt that i was great yeah i was like it was a little bit a uh, little bit uh, let's go Obi, let's yeah. do this let's uh, so i think it just give a little more boost for the team and, and a good feeling and 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 I tried to make jokes too. I always said, hey, guy, young guys, yeah. hey guys, we play well. There's so many beautiful yeah, yeah. single girls there. Yeah, that's you true. play well, <laughs> they wait, 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 wait you somewhere here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be like, Obi, we went the night, there's girls everywhere, buddy. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, come on, boys. I'm like, Tim, we'll get two and one for the boys so we can blow it after the Sharkies. Like, it was something that you, and that's exactly what it did, Tim. It just, it engaged our dressing room, it brought us together, and it was like, all right, it's go time. You know, it was just, and the, how quick you got dressed to this day is still fucking remarkable. Did you get new socks every day? How'd you get your socks on so quick? Or you already had your actual foot socks on, you already had them on? Before. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Cause that was the only thing that took the longest, getting out of the laundry bag and putting those on, but. I, Brad Boys I played with was the quickest to get dressed. Yeah. I swear it would, so we would go at the 16 minute mark, we'd walk, we'd start walking. He would come 18, 10, and in two <laughs> minutes, I'm talking, as he pours like a full Pepsi in his cup, he could get dressed and it was, yeah, I mean, it was impressive. Everyone else is like watching you, like getting super anxious, being yeah, like, this game guy's gonna, watching him. This guy's gonna miss the game. You remember when boys- Yeah, used to- I'd be saying, I'm like, dude, you gonna be out there for warm up or do you not get a shot? <laughs> yeah, I, I was saying, wait, the guys were a little nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, you'd make it uh, nervous, yeah. but then that's energy, was, so let's uh, go. I was like, don't worry, Cable will be in with the puck drops. He's a little late for warm up, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fans might be upset, but I know he'll be there come puck drop. Bro, what do you got? No, I just wanted to kind of talk about uh, what you've been doing kind of after hockey and uh and then you got involved with that the Solani Steakhouse and Ooh, um what type of wine nice. list do you have there and how did you get involved with that uh that decision well obviously like i played 20 plus years in the league we always went to the best restaurants in every city you know and i always like you know in the dallas i ordered two steaks yeah. i always liked steaks and, yeah. and good food and wine but even i didn't i wasn't that big drinker like like that, you know, I didn't party too much during the seasons, but uh, uh, that was something I said, you know what, this would, it would be cool to have our own restaurant, to come and spend time, uh, have a good f- food, talk with people. So then it was, I think uh, early 2000, it was Thanksgiving, we are in the, in the quarter club and, and I was just start talk, talking about that, that my dream, you know, and my, my golf buddy, Kevin Pratt, he said, I have the same, same, uh, uh, dream, you know. I said, how about if we start uh, searching some locations here, and and it has to be in the PCH. It has to be like good location. And it took ten years before we found that, uh, because not not very often anything comes available. Yeah. So then when we got that, and you know, it, was, it has been fun process, you know. And I'm very proud of our steakhouse. And I, you know, obviously there's a lot of bad habits when you go there, but uh, you know, yeah. you can't go there without drinking. That's you can't go there without drinking. Yeah, and the mac and cheese is fucking deadly mac too. The mac and cheese, steak the, tartare the food is unbelievable. They got the new patio now since COVID started too. So I've sat out in the patio. Yes, yeah. I mean, great. Spot. So how often, like pre-COVID, how often would you go to the restaurant? Would you go every weekend after? Like, how much did you try to be? I've been a couple times and you weren't there the, the two times I was there, but would you try to go a lot before COVID? Uh, yeah, I try to be at least a couple times a week. Couple times a week. Uh, and uh, my favorite thing is I go with my buddies to the, in the bar, watch hockey yeah. and, and have a few cocktails and have a good meal. And uh, But you know, it depends. There's a, 
a lot of times there's something happening happening that I promised to go. Actually, the first <laughs> first year after the season was like there's three charity things that I promised to go. So Wednesday I went there. I, I told my wife I'm gonna drive because so, I made a few 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 cocktails, yeah, whatever. Glass of wine. But uh, but. So it, it ended up having a great night. I <laughs> left my car in the valet, take an Uber home. Then next day, it was another event there. I said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to drink anything tonight. Well, I left another car there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then Friday, I said, you know what, I, I'm tired. And of course, couple, after a couple of drinks, it's fun again. I left the car there again. <laughs> so then Saturday, I told my family, OK, we all go. My two boys were driving. So I said, uh, okay, whole family, we go to dinner. And then I, when we pulled in the uh, valet, the guy said, uh, Mr. Salana, you know you still have a three cars here. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I, I do. That's why I brought the whole family. So we got everybody You're home. like, yeah, don't worry. I got 36 yeah, more yeah. at home. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I have the same problem, Flash. I, I leave my car there Friday golf. I leave it there on Friday, but I don't pick it up till Monday. So all weekend, I don't, I don't have a car. I got to get my girlfriend to pick me up. But, yeah, your steakhouse is unbelievable. I've been there a couple of times. The wine list is... It's National League Broadway. Next time you come out, we'll take you there. Yeah. Flash, I want to I mean, ask you about a guy that, that meant a lot to me near the end of my career, and I think you, you played with him as Dallas Aikens, the head coach of the Ducks. I went down to San Diego. I lost my passion for the game, to be quite frank with you. And, and Dally, you know, the way he treated me, I just think he's an unbelievable person. I think he's doing a great job with the Ducks right now with what they have. Can you just touch on what, you know, Dally means to you? And has, has he reached out to you to get involved at all, maybe, and help him out? Yeah, you know, actually, uh, the funny story, when I, when I threw the club up, up and I shot it in the, the uh, rookie goal scoring record. Dallas was the guy who catch it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was he Dallas. kept it. He's like yeah, <laughs> so funny. Dallas tells everybody that you know I'm all, almost Hall of Fame because I catch the club. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but Dallas, you know, he, he, what a great guy. I played with him a couple of years, and and and, and uh, you know he's such a gentleman and 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 always good example for everybody. And uh, you know I'm so happy he's coaching for the Ducks and. Uh, you know, he has a different approach than maybe the old school coaches. He wants to really know how the guy's doing. He tried to explain and talk about that. He wants to know how the guys feel. Yeah. And, and like old old uh, school guys, they don't they don't talk to you. Randy wasn't asking yeah. me how you felt, was he, Randy? <laughs> no, maybe, maybe he was asking for me, but uh, but, not, you know, but that was yeah. the normal thing at the time, you know. Yeah. And now sure. it's more like it's not only coaching hockey; it's a people coaching as well. So it's a, it's a different era right now, and, and to be honest, it's the hardest thing to be a coach. You know, the thing is, there's 25 different personalities, yeah, yeah. and I always uh, uh, remember when the 07 team, like some guys, you have to yell, you have to be top of it every day about uh, what you're doing. Like some Penner, guy, like Penner, for example. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's the fun, the fun. So Carlisle was yelling him the fucking Penner like a hundred times a day. <laughs> So it was unbelievable, but obviously he knew that Penner can take that. Yeah. So after we won, I asked Penner, how, that was tough year. <laughs> he said, oh my God. A lot of days I thought my first name is fucking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, but the point is that, you know, you, 25 different guys, you, I have to hug to get, to get the best of, best of you out, you know. So you, I have to yell for you. Yeah. I always knew Andy McDonald. So Randy was a couple of times pretty hard for him, and I and I saw like when Andy started going like little shell, and and he couldn't use his confidence. I said, Randy, let me tell like if you want something, tell me, and I can tell him that I can explain that maybe better better than yeah, you. Yeah, I'll get you the know? message across. Yeah, to him, because yeah. the thing is, he can't play if you start yelling. You yeah. you have to you have a different approach for him. So having twenty five those that's the ultimate goal to have twenty five guys playing. In their level every night, and it's not easy, you know. No. You know, it's the and and that's a guy, a guy that we love to play for, Barry Trotz in Nashville. He was he was probably the best I had at besides Dallas at the end of my career of, of really twenty five guys, you know, asking how your family's doing and really caring about you. I think that's why Barry Trotz had such good success yeah. over the career because it's important. It's well, hard. And what really bothered me uh, in the old days that you know, there's young guys, they haven't played in five six games. Nobody tells why you're not playing. Yeah. So obviously you're working so hard after the extra, after the practice with the, with the one coach. And, and then I'll, so many times the young guys came to ask me, that, Tim, what, what do you think uh, I should do? You know, like uh, uh, I haven't played five games. Nobody tells me why I'm not playing. You know, I'm just like losing my confidence. 
So what? Well, go talk to me. Like just like I know it's it's tough sometimes, but. And then when they went and the coach didn't tell you the real answer, yeah. that really bothered me because the thing is the truth hurts, but it's only right way to do it because if you come to me and I'm the coach, and one, hey, oh, but you're too soft, you're too slow in the corners, you, 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 you're <laughs> take not tough enough. You take too many penalties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until you, you clean that act, you're not gonna play. Yeah. So at least you know, right? So yeah. I always remember uh, Marco Kiprusov. Oh, Kipper. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was uh, actually Axe, right? Mika's brother, oh. not the goalie. Okay, sorry, sorry. So he was in Montreal, one of the best skaters in, as a defenseman. So he didn't play. Nobody t told him why. So end of the practice, they made him skate like half hour. And he always said, like, I'm the, one of the best skaters in the, in, the, in, in the team, and they make me skate. Why, why they don't tell me <laughs> if I'm soft or I'm bad in the battles? Why I don't work that? Yeah. Instead, skating. I know how to skate. Yeah. <laughs> Speed's not my problem. It was just old, old school thing. If you don't play, you back I know. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Fuck. And then you get in the game, you're still not in game shape. You're like, why have I been bagging for the last two exactly. weeks? Exactly. did a lot of it's that a, in my day, Hobbs. Fuck. A lot of that. But no, the back skate, that's, that was like the story of my uh, career in New Jersey. I think I played 30 <laughs> games that year and getting bagged. But luckily I had Ryan Klo and Chloe was unbelievable with it because like he'd do the back skate with me. And once he wasn't able to do it, he'd be like, all right, Hazy, you're done. So well, I understand that whole aspect of like the coach. I hated it when they give you the, the phony answer. Like I got one time, you got to work on your stops and starts. I was like, I'm in the fucking NHL. You don't think I can stop and start? Yeah. But it just, I don't know. I don't know what these guys are doing. But like you said, it's hard to do with the personalities. And that's another great thing about Dallas. Uh, did you ever, no, you, you were gone. Nick, you remember Nick Ritchie, who was with the Ducks, yeah, right? Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. So so Randy was, was all over him. Um, yeah. He's, he's, and, you know, and I tried to help Nick. But Dally was great at making, riding the bike and working out fun. Like even for me, I was 33 or years old or whatever. And I was back down the Myers. But I would go in there and he would energize you. And he would do the bike rides. There would be three different groups. He'd do every bike ride with you. So you're like, well, Dally's already done three of these rides. How could I not try to keep up with him and, and, and push yeah. you? And I, I just think he's, I think he's the right man for the job in Anaheim. And I just hope that he gets the opportunity to see this play out, Tamo. I really hope so too. And you know, I, I have a couple, a couple of, he lives in Coro too. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had a couple of times dinner with uh, with uh, him and his wife and, and my wife. And, you know, obviously he asked a couple of times, Tamo, we have to get you back yeah, in, the, in the business, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like my answer. I said, you know, I don't know if I have time, you know. Yeah. But he said anything. Like, like just think about, like, uh, we need a good guys. We need good energy in the room and the people who, who, is, who are happy. And, you know, I think that's one thing what I'm proud of my, my career is that, you know, every morning when I came to the rink, it doesn't matter if, if we, we won like six in a row or, or we lost six in a row. I try to be happy, you know. Yeah. I try try to remind the guys were down. I said, you know what, guys, we are lucky, so lucky that you know our our hobby became our job, and and you can do something what you love to do. So hey, don't feel sorry for for yourself. Let's go out and have fun, and we, we're gonna be better. You know, it's a process, and and that's what I think. That's kind of environment is missing a lot of times. People take it still way too seriously, yeah. and uh, they don't know that there's a bright side. With every story and there's only one way out of it is just to stick together and, and once you like if you start turning at each other and get miserable like it doesn't it doesn't give us the two points from last night boys we still lost that fucking hockey game like let's just have a good time work hard and granted we didn't lose much when i was in anaheim but we were definitely always having a good time but working hard in practice for sure absolutely yeah. i always believe that the best players have to be hardest working guys in the practice because that's going to create everybody in the winning environment and and uh you have to make sure that you show up every day, you know, and, and even it's 20, 30 minutes, but give the good 20 minutes practice. Yeah. It's, it's not too much to ask, you know. No. Tamo, last one for me before I turn over to these guys for the last one. Uh, Chris Pronger was a guy that we've had on the show and, and Prongs was good to me as a rookie. And I always wondered from your perspective when they brought him in and just what he, you know, playing with him, what he meant to the team. How was it dealing with, with Prongs day in and day out and just as a teammate? You know what, first of all, the Pronger was probably the toughest player I ever played against. And I think he was first guy and only guy that I got really personal in the, on the ice and, and even in the Olympics in, in 2006 uh, after the first uh, period against Canada. The lower, lo our locker rooms were very close to each other and 
we were we, we stayed there yelling like 10 minutes and he tried to get to get to me and there's people you know protecting yeah, you know and, and, I, and we are just throwing bombs to each other and everything and, and every game like he the way how he played he was so evil he used the stick like a weapon he was just a sturdy player and I, I always I knew when I'd be playing against St. Louis because it's not gonna be a fun day yeah. you know? and he played always against me and and those rules in the old days you know like a lot of times I went around him and he just hooked me and uh, and then I started yelling referees and they're they like what and <laughs> and he's yelling me like what a whiner you're like I said you don't know how even how to play the game you know? <laughs> Shut up. so it, it got it got, it got it got pretty personal, and I played with his brothers. They're a great family. I knew he's a great guy. Sean Parker's a great guy, right? Yeah, well, yeah I, and so is Chris, you know. But yeah, I didn't I know him that, that part because I, I didn't really, I didn't want to know. I thought it was a jerk, you know. Yeah, you just hated him. So then, you know, when uh, uh, after the 2005, 2006, you know, Brian Burke said, "I'm gonna go after some big, big, uh, uh, big guy if, if if I can," and I took the pay cut so we got more room in the in the. In the cap, and, and then I, in my birthday, July third, I got a phone call from Alex Gilchrist, yeah, and he said we got Pronger. I said, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought first, <laughs> I, I, all right, I, trade I, me. I, I thought first, <laughs> I'm out of here. I thought Sean for Sean Pronger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so I got, like, we, we got Chris Pronger. Yeah, and we already went to conference final. I knew that point I knew we were gonna win and the thing is I always remember when I met first time uh, Bronx in the locker room before the camp we didn't say anything we just we went to each other and gave a big hug <laughs> yeah. and, and you know then you know like like Greg we have we, actually we became very yeah, no, good you, friends you, guys, you know yeah, you guys and a close. great great uh, uh, respect to each other and stuff but that's why he was so good because he was the way how he played he make make everybody hate to play against him yeah. but that's why he's a hall of famer he's a un unbelievable player and it was great to play with him i always said you know thank god you're in my team because yeah, I, I, I don't totally. have to deal this with anymore but and you know the see the way how we see the game you know and and how much he helps everybody it's, it's phenomenal yeah. and how much he get away with oh he was the only guy that got away with he should get the penalty every shift, every shift but because he does <laughs> two three every shift the referees can't do that <laughs> so the thing table table had the best chirps for the refs ever like the lines of a rookie you always give like you're like are they, are they paying you out here tonight are they paying how much i'll buy you out i'll buy you out <laughs> you need a, yeah. sometimes they need cause do you want do you need a beer too you know? i got only watch and drink beer or i gotta do your job so table we had in our corner, my rookie year, it went Getzlav, Pronger, Marchant, myself, Penner, Getzlav, and then Solani in that corner. That was our corner. Who was the most hungover guy every morning? Who could you tell when he walked in? I don't want to put you on the spot, but who do you think was... You would always say this every morning to this point, one guy. It was Corey Perry. He'd be like, <laughs> oh, he'd be like, oh, because you look whatever. I'm like, holy fuck, Perry, you look hungover this morning. Well, like, he couldn't hide it because yeah, I yeah. was like... <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, try, just try to even show that you don't, you're not, you don't have a hangover. Yeah, so. The way how he walk and he was like, oh. <laughs> Tim was like, you guys don't look bad. Bears fuck, but you look hungover. So. <laughs> you got one more for Table Broadway before we wrap it up? No, uh, you guys touched on everything like uh, that I that I got here, so I'm yeah, good. I got it. Team hey, Hall, yeah. down. You got, you, oh, you I'll ask job. you just something non-hockey related. Yeah. Um, I know you like to travel, been all over the world. Is there anywhere, you know, you miss going to right now? Like, I miss traveling. Yeah, um, me too. It's, you know, it's everything. Yeah. Where, where do you like to go? Like, whether well, my, my, or... my biggest thing is I always, I don't want to just go holiday somewhere. I try to go somewhere where it's actually same time, like a Ryder Cup or Australian Open or Monaco Formula One or or uh, I try to go all the majors in in golf and and tennis, and uh, then my, my dream was to play the top hundred golf courses in in US USA, and there's a lot of things you know uh, I'd like to do, but obviously the last year or so I haven't. I was I went to Cabo a couple of weeks ago yeah, first yeah. time. I know. Yeah. I was, I was texting. I was telling. I, 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 even I think him. I think he's icing me up, I dog. Text, I even called Getsy. I'm like Getsy, man. I'm like, uh, I got table here. I, like, is, I'm like, is he, does he not answer his phone? He's like, no, I typically answer his phone, but he's not going to text you back. And then you text me, you're like, hey, Obes just got back from Cabo. I'm like, what a beauty. <laughs> yeah, I, I, when I went there, I didn't I didn't keep my phone no. all the time with me. We're, so we're I, going tomorrow. Yeah. We go. We oh, got really? Bird. Oh, I love that place. Did you where did you stay? Yeah, uh, we got Esperanza. Oh, good. Oh, nice. Yeah, you know, it's it's a paradise. You know, yeah. It's, uh, and it's only less than two hours uh, away, so it's uh, 
Yeah, we got to put another. Um, so, so we did a golf trip last year around. She's probably it was what June or March. Uh, when, when did we go? When was anyway, your daughter we, born? Getsy, my daughter was born in August, but it was it, it was, was like June. It then. was my we had a Dachler open. We called it. <laughs> Loop, Loopal organized it. We had yeah. eight guys. Gaslav came. We went up to Bandon Dunes. We played there. Ooh, no, I haven't played there. That's good. Yeah, it's a good golf. Oh, trip. I already so, talked. So we'll, we're we're going to put another golf trip on the books, and we'll we'll let you know because it's. I got to get really you out to Big thing. Canyon too. I've never. We're not allowed guests yet, but I, I whenever we can have guests, I, I, there's some of our boys that want to meet you too, and I want to yeah. play. Have you played Big Canyon before? Yeah, once. Once, yeah. Yeah. So you talk about 100 top 100 golf courses. What's your favorite one round? Well, or is it, well, I know it's a tough question, but it is. Well, first of all, I think my favorite place to go play is the Palm Desert. Oh, uh, there's man. I go to Big Horn or, or Vintage or or Toscana or Madison. There's so many. It's a it's a dream come true for golf. But you know what? Obviously, uh, the Ducks gave me a retirement present to go. Three days in Augusta. Oh, and man, that, 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 that was. Uh, <laughs> oh, I knew I was gonna say. It. All my buddies are so jealous about that. You know, that was something that you know. It's hard to describe. It was, what did the ducks give you? Ups? That, uh, they gave me a picture of me in flashback <laughs> with my first goal puck that I still got in my bedroom, but that's about all they gave me. That's, that's a treat. Yeah, and it was two that's weeks after. Nice. After First of all, so my Finnish buddy played uh, in that year. He played there, and I was catting yeah, him was in part with, three. Yeah. And I, was, I spent a whole week there, and then after I went to home a couple of weeks, and then we flew back with two of my buddies, and two nights, three days in Augusta National. It's... Did you stay in the cabins? Yeah, we stayed wow. in the cabins. And wow. it, it's were the grandstands still up? Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow, that's that's a, you wow. almost felt that you were there. Wow. Yeah, we were like playing. And, and the know. greens were really quick. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What would you shoot? You know what? First of all, we played... Uh, we played the memberships. There's no way you can go in the in the championship. Yeah, so it's, it's, like it's, it, right? it's a way shorter. So uh, there's some like like a eleven hole eleven. It's like maybe hundred yeah. yards. Probably the toughest uh, tee shot on tee uh, shot in the in in world. So uh, you know, I shot 80, 81, 81, and the, the last one was eighty, and I missed the par putt for seventy nine. So I, my goal was to, to yeah, go, break but like I said. After T, it was. That's not the real score because it's uh, it's probably like sixty five hundred from the member Yeah, isn't it, isn't it the worst when you go play somewhere and it's like it's it's set up to be like the most epic time, and you just can't fucking putt or you can't like get off the tee. Oh, yeah, I just I just yeah, played with yeah, Michael Jordan this weekend <laughs> and I could not fucking putt, and he can get up and down from. So everywhere. how good golfer is he? He's a three. And he will play. He will play anyone for whatever you want to play for. But really? he's, he's a three. And he, at his own course, it's everything is is tight lies around the greens. Um, so if you're not a good chipper, you probably putt everything. But he has, I mean, he built hills in front of the greens and everything. It's he can chip. He can get literally up and down from everywhere, and he uses a long putter. Well, he has a pretty good hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Not only does he have his hands, but he has like this. Obviously, yeah. he's the greatest yeah. of all time. Yeah. He has it up here. Yeah. His mentality when he like, like I was I was telling this story about what he said to this caddy. He didn't say anything to the caddy. He looked at him. He was thirty yards off the green, and the caddy went and pulled the pin. And I'm like, Michael, <laughs> right next to the stick. And I'm like, really? and then I looked at the caddy. I'm, Why the fuck did you pull the pin? And he's like, he gave me the look. He's like, when he when he's on there, he ain't missing. No. And it, it was crazy. It was. He had a stogie in his mouth the whole time. How, how many stogies? Probably 20. <laughs> 20 a day? I played 36 with him. And we passed. I mean, so we didn't wait on any tee box. Every time we pull up, and it was actually busy there that day. It was probably the busiest day they've ever had. Every every group would step off to the side, listen to the tunes MJ's got in his car, and he pumps them in his boot box, in his, in his beat box, yeah. and would just like, you know, hey, Mike, hey, you know, play through, and we would just fuck him. Oh, really? we, we played in five hours. We played, we played 36 in five hours. That is awesome. You enjoy a nice stogie out there on the course too. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, I love cigars, yeah, right? especially in the golf course. Yeah. He had the big boys too. Yeah. <laughs> and like when, when you look at him, you go, fuck, okay, nice birdie. And just, he'd <laughs> smile at you with that stogie still in there and he'd just drive to the next so team. So how, like, how you got to play with him? Uh, my new boss, so I'm working for Discovery Properties, oh, yeah, Madison yeah, Club. Yeah, I just yeah, got hired yeah. a week ago to be a global ambassador. Um, 
I got tough, to tough job, man. Yeah, fuck hey, man. someone's got to do it. I mean, I still got Chil- work. Chilano Bay in uh, yeah. Chilano. So we're gonna go play there on Friday oh. with our boy Billy Quinn. Have you been there before? I have not. I've been to El Dorado. I haven't been to Chilano. And and that, let's do that, a trip. That, that's Beach Club in Chilano Beach. It's it's the best that there is. Best yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. Wow. It's it's like you don't want to leave there. It's just yeah. like. That's where the ladies are going to go, and then me, me and you will maybe yeah. shack up and buy a place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Podcast better take off, fella. So I went out with my boss, JJ, and uh, we went to Baker's Bay. That got demolished a year ago by Hurricane. So we played golf there with one of our good buddies who's looking at a place. And then he's like, listen, your first work trip, I got something special for you. We're going to fly in and play with MJ. And I'm like, huh? He's like, we're going to go. As ne- He's a member at his club, Gro- Grove 23. And we went in and just had this most epic day drinking tequila sodas and smoking cigars with MJ. <laughs> it was worth the money I lost. To be <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, and I guess, I guess Flashy, t- so the fairways, you know better than me, but where he hits it, they're, they're wider, right? Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, and yeah. then for the guys that farther, he narrows them out because he's right. oh, he designed, designed it, for right? him. So, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. clever. And he, and he built, if you're a top 100 guy, he built the course after his favorite one, Shinnecock. So that's his favorite course. So yeah. right now it's a little, it's it hasn't matured yet. So the fescue, you can see where it is going to grow in and then look out. Like I was bombing it all over the course and luckily I can find my ball wherever. But when this fescue grows up, it'll play a lot like like Shinnecock. Hilly, big greens, link yeah. style course. But, but you, you hit way far, further than I was him. pumping it by him. Yeah, because then, you, go, you go like 330. Yeah, I remember I'll be that. Pounded. I'll be pounded. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I realized though is if you're gambling against the greatest of all time and you can't putt, you're yeah. going to get smoked because yeah. he gets it. He's yeah. good. So yeah. who's the best guy you played golf with? Who's the one guy that you played with that you're like, holy? Well, I got a chance to play uh, with Tiger uh, oh, you did? In, okay. uh, in his foundation a little bit, but uh, best player. Well, now was it, how was it playing with Tiger? Pretty cool experience for you? It's or? pretty cool. He played only a few holes, not, not the whole round, yeah. but uh, you know, it's... It, Everything is so easy. Uh, and we had actually a chance to go, at, which was more impressive. Before that, it was me and uh, uh, Tim Ryan, who was the president for the Ducks. Yeah. So we went to the ninth tee box, nine in the morning. And there was Fred Couples, uh, Joe Cook, uh, and Tiger, and me and Tim. And Tiger gave, gave us like a private uh, like routine, how he does before the tournaments. He started hitting, uh, certain clubs and he said okay that tee box my target hit five shots in like two three feet apart then he takes seven iron hits like he's he always told where he's gonna hit and same thing different shapes with the tree wood yeah. and then a couple of bombs with the driver and it was just something like you said like crazy yeah. i mean our buddy casey who's at taylor we went down to the kingdom and he said when tiger comes in there he has like a window that he pretends to hit out of and like he's trying to hit shots through that. Yeah. He's like, no, no, not that one. Like the way he can see a yeah. golf ball, it's crazy. He filmed that uh, that like four or five part little series that you could you could have bought on the PGA Tour app. Yeah, where he showed you how to draw. And, and he cut. actually talked about the windows where he looks, every shot is a grid. And yeah. it's like, I'm going to put it through that window and it's either going to draw or it's going to fade. And it's yeah. it's pretty wild. It's, Hopefully it's okay now. It yeah. does yeah, terrible yeah, thing, right? So, so much he has, he has been going through so much crazy. and then he needs that one I know. this is weird um so couples is a member at big canyon so maybe we'll set up me you yeah Freddie, I know, Freddie. Freddie, yeah, yeah. That'd, that'd be, we'll get how beautiful swing he has buddy he still hits at 320 easily yeah and funny guy yeah, he's, yeah, he's he likes to talk, talk sports yeah. loves talking sports yeah. so we'll set that up um tamo i could do this all day with you buddy i really it means a lot um let's let's uh yeah thank you man it's been great uppy yeah that hey, awesome. my pleasure. Yeah, next, next time really. we have a cigar and a scotch and we can have 24 hours. This. Yeah, I yeah we, because, because that's the best thing, you know, like I love to talk about hockey, yeah. the life, even politics, you know, and just like I can go a whole day. So yeah, yeah. No, the next one we'll yeah. do it. Uh, we'll do it more. Just we won't even talk about hockey. We'll talk about everything else. Talk okay. <laughs> Broadway, thank you, my friend. Good to see you. Yeah, thank you. All nice right. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Obi Hazy, special announcement. We have DraftKings on as an official sponsor of the Missing Curfew podcast, and we welcome them. Uh, great guys at DraftKings. We want all of our listeners to tune in. We're going to give you the curfew uh, curfew promo code to jump on. Any new uh, any new listeners, make sure you make sure you do that. And today we have a special guest, 
uh, who's jumping on here to do a little competition for us. We're going to call this competition OBS the Face Off. We're okay. going to try to do this once a week. And basically, we're going to have a little face off where we pick uh, an NHL player who is going to absolutely light it up this week. Maybe get the most points, most goals. I'd say this week we do he's most gonna points. He's going to be doing the fucking, right? He's going to be doing the fucking. Okay. So, All right. So why don't you start us off, Obes? We okay. got we, we got, got the week from this this till next Tuesday, and uh, Max, our boy, will do the uh, the official standings. But let's take a look at some of the guys who are doing the doing okay. the thumping. I'm, I'm going to go with seeing how they got shut out the last two games and cost me money. I'm going to say Mitch Marner is my pick for who's going to have the most points over the next is it the week or weekend. Or? It's the it's the week. So let's say it's probably three or four three games. Three or four games. I'm going to go with Mitch Marner. Matthews is knocking on the door about coming back. I think he's close. So I'm going to go with Mitch Marner is going to really have a big week here. Tamu, what do you think? Oh, <clears throat> that's you know, it, that's, Mr. Salah. That's a good call. I, I I still think if Matthews is out, he's not. Yeah, I know it's not going to be quite as humming as much. Although Marner can, he can, he can stick handle in a phone booth dialing out. Can't yeah, he? it's fun to fun to watch. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Well, he's nasty. Uh, Trocheck up there in the, You know, in it's the almost. Uh, Wrong to not to take McDavid. You know, it's just like he's so <laughs> you good. feel yeah, like you're cheating. It's like having yeah. him on a video game. It's like you know you're gonna win. And he's just gone back to back games with a point. Which I know I don't he's gonna think come out. Never happened to him. Tim. I know. He can well, have I have to take. Him. Okay, the, the yeah, flash is, is taking McDavid. The Hall of Famer's taking McDavid. He deserves it. You were very kind that you didn't take him. Well, I can't do that. To, I can't do that to you, <laughs> so, my friend. I mean, I think we should we should do the odds boost for a guy that's not called. Uh, Connor McDavid for this. Yeah, event. maybe we could. Jimmy, what do you got over there, fella? I mean, it's going to come to a surprise from you guys, but I'm going to obviously go with a guy from Philadelphia who's been on fire this year. It's James Van Reems. Wow. Like, Van Reems nice. got the healthy nice lineup pick. coming back, full lineup. They just got back from COVID. I continue. I think I'm going to see him continue to keep scoring goals and putting up numbers. I don't know who's a bigger Flyers fan, Gritty or you, but I'm not sure. It's <laughs> fucking close. Hey, when the brother's on the team, you got to support. I don't know if they, <laughs> no, Jamie, what's the that same? Is true. Uh, Great blood is thicker than water. I am going to take, boys, I'm going to take Jonathan oh. Huberto. Oh, Hubie. He's not on like our that. list of the top 20 okay. scores, but he's absolutely on fire. We've been talking a lot about him on, on air on my radio shows, and um, I just like the Florida Panthers right now. So Jonathan so, Huberto is my guy. Okay, so what are we, we're just playing for the, the DraftKings thing, right? Yeah. DraftKings, baby. Yeah, jump on. Our listeners, this is, we're going to do this once a week, create a little traction. Uh, next week, maybe we do, you know, will this guy you know, score a goal? Will this guy yeah, get no, in a great. fight? We'll do a competition every week. We'll call it the face-off, and we hope the listeners like it. Love it. Mitch Marr, let's go. Well, up dog. Thanks to Tim Bustolani, one of my favorite teammates, and uh, just an unbelievable dude and great guy. I couldn't tell he was one of your teammates. <laughs> that introduction you gave him was fucking all time. Finally, well, I had to tell you to stop. I'm like, it's enough. Because I guy mean, off. yeah, making the guy blush. I over know. Here. Fuck, he still looks good too. Eh? His hair is perfect. What's he putting? He that is. Hair? He's one of the all-time best, and not only at hockey, at living life. Yeah. As we just, what well, you know. Guy's got good taste in everything. Everything Love that he does. Dream life. Everything. It was a dream. I was like, oh man. Yeah. Cars, golf courses, restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> God, man. Life's good if your table's slow. Broadway. Yeah. It was. We were trying to. I, I apologize. I was trying to get involved as much as we could, but we were just. It was just flowing the studio. But what did you? I mean, you must have been a fan of Tamo playing against him and growing up and stuff. Man, he was one of those guys. Like I, I grew up like a Bruins fan, but I also grew up a hockey fan for whatever team Keith Kachuk and Tom Fitzgerald were playing. And him and Kachuk broke into the league together. So I remember being a little kid, probably in second grade, skipping school, just going to uh, watch Bruins uh, practice and getting the Jets pregame skate after. And he's just a guy that I've loved ever since I've been a little kid. If it goes gets laugh as I got older, but Timo Solani was a guy that was just unbelievable to watch. I mean, anybody that could make that Jolfa bucket look fucking cool. So at the end of practice, I wanted to tell us my rookie year, he would be like shooting pucks or whatever. And I'd be like, Tamo, switch buckets with me. And then I'd be skating around with that Jofa helmet on. And like, there's no, and then Getsy would put it on or whoever. Like, only Tamo Solani could make that bucket look cool. And he fucking rocked it, didn't he? Gretz wear a Jofa helmet? Yeah, in practice without the visor. Tamo wore it in the, like, yeah. Gretz yeah. wore like the skinnier Jofa. Like, Tamo's was like a legit yeah. bucket. Yeah, legit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. With the visor. It was, and he made it look good. And yeah, it's crazy. Could, so. One of the biggest legends of all time. Some 76 goals as a rookie. Yeah. That'll never, I mean. Never no be one's touched, touching right, that. Boys? Never, that, that never to be touched. No, that'll be never be touched. And we're going to set up a golf game. Hopefully, probably, maybe you can come out if we can have a guest at Big Canyon. But let's get him out to 
with Freddie and, and Getsy. That'll be good. That'll be a good time. So. All right. Well, we got a big week ahead, Obes. We are Cobble, headed baby. to Cabo, Wabo. Got I mean, the bird you, all fired you do up. is travel, baby. Like, hey, <laughs> World hey. Class getting good at traveler. it. You rent that house out or I'm what are you getting doing? getting good at it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I got I got my boy Matt here. He's gonna take my little dog for for the week. Riley, so, love Riley. that dog. He's, he's Still a got a purple tail. I respect that. Yeah, that's growing up. <laughs> Shout out to our boy Billy Quinn. We're going down to see Quinner, who's a big fan of the pod, who's an absolute beauty. We're going down to play some golf with him. Um, bringing our beautiful girlfriend. Go sell some properties, daughter. baby. Hey, maybe we'll sell a couple lots. Got to go sell. Yeah, yeah. The, is it a partner? Are you guys working? Yeah, are you maybe. working down there, boy? I'm always working, Jimmy. Always yeah, working. You are. You're always on the Look what we're doing here. We're always working. Uh, Broadway, thank you again. Uh, we miss you in the studio, but you're a huge part of the team, fellow. We love you. Up dog to our listeners until next week. Thanks for listening. Flash, you the man.